Juan Moya is a tattoo artist legend in Kansas City. His work can be seen on thousands of people all across the KC metro area. His talent has been contributed to the Gage Park Stairs on the west side in Kansas City and in the Nelson Atkins Museum at their layered presence show today. This is Juan's first podcast interview, and this discussion captures the man, his many talents, and his incredible journey he is still on. We were honored to capture his story. Westside Kansas City, stand up. This is Interrupt KC. Enjoy this episode. Welcome back to Interrupt KC, the podcast dedicated to people, places, and things right here in Kansas City. I'm your man, D-Rod. This is JL. Thank you, man. Thank you. What's going on? Man, I'm telling you what, right now, brother, right now, <laughs> I'm excited, man. I'm man. excited as hell, man. Our guest we have today, man, um, man, I, I hollered at him, you know, right when we started this thing off uh-huh. the end of last year, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh... He 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 definitely was all in, man. But it took a little. It took a little bit, man. It well, took he had a to get bit. situated, right? He had he, to get situated. He did, man. He had to get situated, man. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm so excited, <laughs> man. Me too, he, man. Me too, beyond, man. It's that uh, that he uh, is able to sit here, man, with us today. Man. It's another. This another hood legend, man. We we sitting with a hood legend ourselves, man. man. Kansas City legend. So man, everybody, everybody knows this man. That's you right, know. man. Honor, man. It's an honor. So proud, honored. To sit here today, we're gonna we're gonna interrupt our guests, right? Yep. And that's by right. interrupt, we mean introduce our guest. Yes. None other than the man himself, Mister Juan Moya. Juan What's Moya, up, Juan? Hey, fellas, up, fellas. Hey, you're a little too kind there, but thank you, thank you. <laughs> no, man, that's all earned, brother. That's all earned, man. Thank brother, you, brother. Hey, Juan, it goes without saying, man, and you really are a legend, brother. Like I'm not making shit up, man, because. You know, I was thinking about this, trying to prepare, man, just to sit down with somebody like you, brother. Like, you've been around, man. You've been around Kansas City for your whole life, right? And, I have, I have. You know, what I'm thinking about is I see my, I see D-Rod, right? Yeah. And he's tatted, tatted to the core, man. Yeah, man. I mean, you own this arm, bro. You own this whole <laughs> sleeve, right? Show I mean, it off, D-Rod. Man, what, you, what's, you what's own he everything, does? everything, man. You, I mean, you've done everything on here, bro, from my, my Pancho Villa, my Zapata, my my eagle man i huh. mean you this this is your arm and i felt obligated man what you did so all right we're, we're gonna we're gonna kick it back a little bit man yeah, we're gonna yeah, kick yeah, it back yeah, right yeah, yeah. the first time well i met juan back in high school man like I, i've known him since we were young mm. young 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 and um i'm gonna tell the story real quick Right. So I, I remember coming across this classroom, man, and I, I don't know what class. What this grade? Is. What grade? Man, I think I had to have been a, a junior in high school, Westport High, right? Juan, Westport you remember High. him as a junior in high school? I do, I do. You do? For sure, all for right, sure. All right, all right. So th- this particular story, man, that, that I, I, I want to share, and I don't know if you remember this, Moya, man, but okay, so we were leaving, and J.L., I'm, I get up, bell rings, and I'm getting up going forward to leave. Yeah. And I look down, and Juan's drawing, man. He's draw, He's got this picture, man. And I look down like, holy shit. I mean, it was, <laughs> man, the the detail, it was it was like two guys sitting at a table, okay, trying to picture this. Two guys yeah. sitting at a table. Another guy was standing <laughs> up, right? But the other guy, like, had a blade, like, smashed into the table, and uh, I, I don't know. That's all that caught my eye while I was walking past young Juan huh, drawing this. Young and Juan. I was like, holy shit, look at that. <laughs> Bro, it was just mess. Juan, do you remember that, man? You know, I remember that actually very clearly. Do you? Really? Yeah, hey, I was a freshman. And for some reason, the classes were intertwined with freshmen and juniors, whatever. Yeah. And I believe it was a math class. Mm, if I, if damn, I, if he I, does I, remember. Yeah. He yeah, does well, remember. And I remember Dan because he was like, one of the kids in school that actually had a tattoo. Now, 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 now my, and not only, not only just a tattoo, it was a tattoo on his neck. Mm. So oh, that man. was like, whoa, whoa, you know? Like, so, so I, so I knew, yeah, I knew Dan, I knew who he was because of the tattoo, you know? That's kind yeah. of funny and Which ironic. Which tattoo was that? Uh, I think it was this, this, this one. Right? 
Oh, the happy now, cry yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had that did you one. do that one, one? No, 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 no. No, he's like, hell, no, I didn't. Know no, no. Well, I, honestly, when you were showing your arm right now, I'll be honest with you guys. When I see old work, it's almost a little embarrassing. Nothing <laughs> taken, not taken away from your art, you right. know, and your arm and stuff. But oh, when you're talking about twenty plus years ago, you know, oh, yeah. 25, oh, 30 years ago, thirty years ago, there's some growth there, and you have yeah. to when you see that old stuff, it's a little. Sometimes it's a little. Well. So, I mean, but here's the thing, though, D-Rod, like, yeah. you know, before we st- we hopped on here, I was telling Juan, like, Juan, hey, bro, like, I don't have a tattoo. Yeah. And he was like, man, I kind of thought you didn't have a tattoo. I didn't think you did. I said, no. But see, you just kind of hit on one of the main reasons why I hadn't gotten a tattoo yet. One, because if I, if I would have started getting tattoos <laughs> at an early age, my dad probably would have beat me to, to death. That's the first thing. My second is, though, is because... I would have put everything at at that moment in my life on me. And yeah. then I, at one point I would have looked down and been like, why the hell did I do this? Shit? Right, right, right. You know? and, and Okay, so go, going back to this story. Yeah. Right, so yeah, this original first one that you gave me, bro, was this eagle, right? And okay, so this is a whole theme that is going on. So I had this shirt made for okay. this episode, right? And it's Santana, right? From, stand uh, up, stand up, so, bro, so we can see oh, it. Oh, man. Come on, man. You talking about the shirt? Yeah. So, so okay, it's Santana Matoya, right? Iconic, iconic. Yeah, man. And reason B, I had this shirt made was because of this tattoo. It was the first one you ever gave me. The quote. The quote. You remember it? Yeah, of course I remember. Yeah. So I much vocals, better locals, man. And I don't know if anybody remembers this. Do you remember what part of that movie that was in? Was it towards the end? Yeah, kind of. It's when JD got released. Oh, right, okay. JD got released, and he's yeah. walking down the deal, and he's like, you know, take it easy out there, or whatever. And yeah, he turns around and he says, "Almost buckles, better locals." And yeah. Ever since then, my my brother, my brother, man, came up with that, you uh, know, because my yeah, brother yeah, Mario yeah, got yeah. the same thing. I remember yeah. that. And uh, so this is that long ago, and so be it that that was my first tat that you gave me twenty four years ago, mind you, because it was <laughs> yeah. on it was on the boulevard, and yeah. we were we were only 24. there. Two years, we were there yeah. two years. Yeah. So yeah. it was about 2001, so 2000. I, I, had, I had to get the shirt because it's kind of like a yeah. like a sentimental value, man. And then finally that's gets awesome, you here on this seat, man. So that's my that's one of my hey, stories. That's man. good, man. I wish I had a story like that, Juan. I, I <laughs> don't, man. I'm sorry, man. I don't. But you have an incredible story, man. Oh, and man. that's why D-Rod was like, hey, we got to get Juan Moya on for this sure, podcast. And sure. I was like, man, for sure, man. Like, hey, man. Even though I've never sat down in your chair and been blessed by your art, which we will make that happen before I D.I.E. Surrounds um, us, man. You know, I, I know so many people, Juan, who been blessed by your art. This man included, my wife. I mean, there's plenty of other people, man. So let's talk about that beginning, right? Like D. I was talking about high school. You already had that art, artistic pin down. You know what I'm saying? So what that looked like, man, growing up, like... Where did you grow up? Let's start there. I grew up on the west side. Um, I, we, we grew up on the Sacred Heart side for a minute, and then we moved over to West Bluff. Okay. You know, up west up end in, corner off of 23rd Street. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I pretty much grew up in West Bluff. Um, shout out Bluff, man. Shout, shout out, out Bluff. Bluff. I was there, brother. A lot of people. A lot of influences for me, as a matter of fact. You know, you had um, people like Deborah Marino. Yeah. Uh, another, oh, yeah. Another buddy's brother, um, Jose Porras. We call him Pepe. And, um, then you had Rest in Peace Country Bear. I don't know if oh, you guys remember him. Those, those, yeah, those. Country, and then, country. of course, Henry Montes. I don't know if you guys remember him. But these are all older, older people that really influenced me yeah. back in the day in the hood. So yeah. I got to give a shout out to them before sure, I even talk about it. But, yeah, I grew up on the west side. I um, grew up in West Bluff. Um, always been into art. Yeah. What, uh, what's that first, like, you know, moment where you were like, man, when somebody noticed your skill, like I'm sure somebody saw you before D Rod and was like, "Hey, yo, Juan, man, you got talent." I don't know, man. I mean, probably I. He was a freshman, bro. <laughs> well, I'm saying though, but right? Before that, right? I, th- I would say a little bit before that. Um, you know, back then we didn't have social media. We didn't have ways to like right. show your art off. It was yeah. pretty much whoever you know, pretty much seen it. It's not like you can share it online or anything. Mm, but yeah. I remember a big thing for me was um jean jackets. Oh, I started painting yeah, jean jackets yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Right. And, you know, you're, people are wearing your art. It's not tattoo, but people are still wearing your art. Right. So that kind of, like, took off a little bit as far as, like, 
being artistic and people knowing my name a little people bit. People seeing your name. Right. Pa- painting the back of the jackets right. or everything. Yeah, well, sure. I got crazy. Sometimes I would paint everything, but damn. You know, yeah. sometimes most time it was the back. Did yeah. you did you like charge them or did you do it for free or what'd that look like? A little bit of both, you know, it depends on who it was. Girlfriends for free, charging everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I did it for the love of the art more than anything. And that's, yeah. that's the whole reason I got into art, for the love of art. Yeah. I never imagined that I'd be able to make a living off of it. Mm. You know, yeah. 35 years ago, I never would think that right, be a right. career or anything like that. Oh, man, I could imagine, man. I mean, you know, so you grew up there at the West Bluff right there on 23rd, Cesar Chavez now, right? Right. Um you went to high school with D-Rod, which was, what high school was that again? Westport High. Westport man. High, man. Westport High. That was one of my many high schools that I went to. I was a knucklehead. Um, I got kicked out of quite a bit of schools in yeah. Kansas City. Yeah. Right, right. Drawn on the walls too much? Yeah, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. <laughs> <laughs> we all been there, brother, man. Yeah. Here we are, man. Here hey, we are, man. Right? Yeah, I mean, we've all had our high school tro- troubles, man. I mean, I'm a high school dropout. I mean, I got my GED, and I'm not saying like I'm proud or anything, but for what I was given or what I took, yeah, I'm here now, so I can't complain. Took, you took full advantage of of the of the skills and the abilities, man, that you got, brother. Well, by far, it's a success story, man. Absolutely. By far, it's a success story, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. And, and regardless of what what that um, looks like or people may look at it as, you know, what you have accomplished in your life and where you at now speaks a hell of a lot more than what any of that. Uh, Thank is. you. Yes. You know Appreciate I mean? it. Yeah, man, for real, for sure. It's a journey. It's a journey. Yeah, man. It's a journey that we all still watch, walk on and try and put yeah, exactly. man, man. You know what I mean? Yes. Man, I'm I'm a I'm just like thinking about that journey, Juan, and thinking about how you said, you know, where you started off with jean jackets and everything. Did you ever get into like graffiti or anything like that on the walls? You know, I dabbled a little bit with the walls. Um I did a little bit of spray paint back in the day. I did a couple of walls. Um Yeah. It was just too much to be looking out for the police and all that right. for me. So yeah. I didn't really. I, at the time, I was really, really focused and wanted to go in the direction of tattooing. Oh, okay. So And back then, there was maybe a handful of shops in Kansas City and Kansas right. combined. And I mean literally right. a handful. Yeah. Now there's over 150 oh, easily. Yeah. Easy. Did easily. You, did, did, well, before you jumped into the tattoo scene, was you... Was you uh, Getting like getting the artistic skills down with your pencils or anything like that. For like, sure, I've always drawn. Um, always took a liking to drawing. It was kind of always a meditation form for myself. Right. Um, I was never really into, and actually never really had toys growing up and stuff mm. like. That. I tell people this all the time, but never really had toys growing up. We were really poor, but right. always had a pencil, always right. had paper, and that was my getaway. Right. Growing up, and I. Love it, you know. Yeah. Do you, got, do you got any of those old drawings? I, I do, I do. They're falling apart, you know, because they're real brittle from the paper and stuff. Yeah. But and they're kind of embarrassing to look at. But <laughs> some of them. But I do, I do, I do. You on that, man. I got some too. I I, I used to dabble a little bit, man. You I did. I remember that, bit, man. Yeah. And uh, I I got some, and I really can't relate to that, man. Some of the I, stuff I got. I feel like everybody's kind of dabbled in art one way or another man, growing yeah, up. Everybody. Yeah. Bro. I mean, it's expression, you know, and oh, yeah. and there's no right or wrong. It's everybody. subjective, you know. Yeah. It's a beautiful Bro, thing. I, I listen to music I used to make, and I'm like, mm. man, some of that's still cutting, uh, cut, no, man. I don't know, man. I'm, I, you know I what I'm saying? It's, it's part it. of growth, right? You like look back 20 years, and you're like, uh, why did I say but, but that? You, but you can look at it and kind of look. Maybe I can curve this, curve that. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, oh, don't make me. A little I'll bit. bust. No, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't, make me, don't make don't me. Don't make me. Don't make me. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. Um, no, nah, so so. When was that moment, brother? Like, like when was that moment which you knew, like, automatically, I'm making this, I'm going to do this for sure. I'm going to get into art, tattooing, you know, when did you know that? I mean, people around me were telling me that I had a knack for art. Mm-hmm. And I remember a couple of teachers in fifth and sixth grade saying, actually, I remember one in sixth grade, her name was Miss Webb. She told my mom, he's going to go somewhere with his art. Ah, and, really? and, you know, when I heard that, when I heard her tell my mom that, it, it, it really influenced me a lot because I never really, I didn't grow up too much around too much positivity. Yeah. But hearing that really sparked me. 
What yeah. school was that? That was Switzer, and it would have been the West High End, but it was still Switzer. Shout out yeah, Switzer. Yeah. I went to Switzer, bro. Did you? A lot of you don't remember Miss Webb? Well, you're a little, you're a lot, you're a lot younger. You're right. I was right. young whenever I was there, man. Like I, 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 man, I was telling my wife, and my kids, every time I drive by it, I'm like, man, I went there. Remember the tunnel? For sure. Oh, the tunnel, yep, bro. Yep. You go up into the cafeteria. They yeah. used to get me. Yeah. Us, <laughs> like I, I got plenty of stories, bro. But uh, yeah, I mean, so Switzer. How old were you? When I went to Switzerland? No, like like when Webb, Miss Webb told you that. Yeah. Oh, that was sixth grade. Oh, that was man, sixth so grade. you were young. Yep, yep. You were like 12, 11, Getting 12. ready to go off to junior high. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Cool. Well, I'm back up a little bit, man. You know, you talked about them greats, man, the old the OGs, right, of mm-hmm. the tattoo sure. places. Like, ones I remember was Grimm's, West Grimm. And I remember Illustrated Man. Illustrated Man, know? yep. And uh, That was the Missouri side, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, Missouri side. But that's all I... That's and all then you I had mentioned. Kansas side, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Who was on Kansas? You had East you Coast Isles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. right. And then you had the shop that was underneath the hotel that's knocked down now. Um, all right, Central? No, it would be um, right where the... Um, the Sun Fresh and all that is now, 18th Street Expressway. Oh, right yeah, there. Central off 18th. Is that Central? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. I 70 and 18th Street. Yeah. They knocked all that down. A little then. truck stop there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, when you were coming up, and uh, did you ever go and holler at them dudes and be like, you know, what's up, um, like an apprentice or anything like that? You, you know, funny thing is, um, I had people around me, and I had a one, I had a homie. Right. And he really pushed me. His name is Frank, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. He really pushed. He 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 had a gift of gab, and he knew how to tolerate people. Right. So shout like, out Frank. Yeah, shout, shout out. out Frank, man. We he was like, come on, man, we're gonna go get you some machines. Let's go. And you know, I was like, ah, man, I don't know if this is gonna happen. You know. <laughs> so we go. And we I'll tell you a quick story. We yeah, go to yeah, East. Yeah, bro. We go to. I, I'm not gonna say the shop. Now I was gonna say you yeah. probably caught it already. But yeah. we go to a shop, and um, the owner in there is like, um, you know, we go in there and say, hey, um. You got any machines for sale or any parts or do you know any direction to get something right. from? He didn't think about it. He was like, get the hell out of here. No oh, you have no man. business tattooing, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. just, just, just get, he kicked us right out. No yeah. way. And I remember leaving that place sparked. Mm. Oh, right. That lit the fire yeah. on me like no other. Okay. I'm going to do and this. I, I said that. I said, I mean, you know what? I'm going to show this guy. Yeah. That I can do it, you know, yeah, and and up. and I never looked back from there. Did, uh, did you ever run into him again? I ran into him a couple of times. I ran into him at a convention, as a matter of fact. Is that right? Yeah. And did I he remember that. Uh, he didn't remember me, but I remember him. And um, <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, um, he was still a negative person at the convention. Oh yeah. man, is he still around? Yeah. I don't even know, man. To be well, honest. Well, I we haven't can, heard. Well, we're done with this. Let me know who that guy is. I will for sure. I will. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. We, I, I like to know about people that do some shiesty shit. Just yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just me, man. I mean, I get it at first going yeah. into the shop, you know, kicking us out. We yeah. have no business, whatever. But years later, when we're at a convention, I seen how his real character was. Yeah. How old were you then, bro? Which part? What, when you went in there to go. Okay, we were about 17. Oh, okay. So we were knuckleheads. You know, we, yeah. we, we did have no business in there, you know what I mean? But he could have been a little more nicer about it. Yeah, well, if you got yeah. that drive and if you want to do that, most people yeah. being that are in any type of uh, profession will be like welcoming, right? But, yeah. you know, that kind of goes back to. Well, I know, mean, it's, it's a competitive industry, right? Well, it is. And especially back then, back then it, it was more, man. it was more curated as a a, a secret kind of like, yeah, it was more of a secret thing. You know what I mean? They don't want to give little tricks out or any right, of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and I mean, I kind of get it. They're protecting whatever, but right. when somebody wants to do something, you're not going to stop them. I mean, look at us now. Bro, you got yeah. everybody's either tattooing or an apprentice or. I mean, it's I mean, blown up. Just on this street right here, man, we got several, you know, exactly. tattoo tattoo well, spots. Well, like you said, there's a hundred and fifty over. I would say if you get well, there's not a yellow page anymore. I was going to say that, but, <laughs> but if Google, you look them Google. up, yeah, yeah, there's there's well over a hundred and fifty. You know, they're opening, closing, and some are staying around. Yeah, and that's just the ones with websites and businesses. I mean, who's yeah. talking? I mean, there's a guy, there's Billy Ray that's somewhere around in the back garage doing some stuff too. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm that are, you know, doing that, which is cool. You know, it all goes it's, somewhere. It's cool. It all starts somewhere, right? It, yeah. it does, and I, you know what? I'm not a hater of it at all. I think yeah, it's good. You know, it's good. I mean, it's blown up, and there's plenty of skin for everybody, right? Oh, bro, man. there's plenty. You know, I mean, there's over two million people in Kansas City region. There you bro. go. The whole you region. Got some skin, exactly. bro. I got a <laughs> lot of skin. Bro. It ain't been touched yet, man. But you, we, we'll get to that. Um, so, you know, 
you walk in there, man. I, first off, Juan, man, I love the attitude, brother. Like you're like, as soon as this dude told me, oh, hey, yeah. get the get the hell out of here, this and that, you were like, you walked out like, oh, I'm doing this shit yeah. for real. Yeah. Like, man, that's the attitude right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> but what was that next step, though, man? Like, <clears throat> did you have to? I mean, how do you become a tattoo artist back then, man? Do you have like a portfolio of art, or like, what does that look like? Do you I, practice on friends or what? I mean, back then, if you knew somebody, you could probably get an apprenticeship with somebody. Ah. And, you know, back then, you're going to scrub floors first. You're going to clean toilets. You're going to go get, you know, drinks or whatever. Right. You can do all the dirt work, you know. Yeah. That's what was required in apprenticeship back then. You're not going to touch skin for a year or so. Mm. But no, it was really hard, especially being Latino back then. Right. I mean, honestly, I feel like I'm probably the oldest Latino Kansas City-based tattoo artist. Mm-hmm. I'd probably go out and say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, shit, I'd probably sit here and be like, yeah, you, you're right. Because yeah. the tattoo artists I see now, I mean, and I don't know, right? I, I really don't know if, if that's true or not, Juan. But I, I will say this. For as long as I've been alive, even when I was a teenager, you know, sitting standing next to this man... People was talking about you when I was 12, 13 years old, oh, brother. Sure, man. And and even to today, I'm in my 40s now. You know what I'm saying? So you've been doing it that long, bro. Yeah, I have been doing it. How long has that been? What's, what's the years you got, bro? I mean, off and on, though. You, I, I would say off and on because the first 10 years don't really count fully. Right. But I'll throw them in there. So, you know, 30, 30 plus. Yeah, 30, 30 plus, plus years, years bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you remember, like, who gave you that first shot? Who was that person? The first shot of acting in a shop? Yeah, like who let you set up in the shop and say, okay, yeah, let's see what you can do. I, okay, so I, I was tattooing off and on in the streets. Um, you know, I tattoo a friend or somebody right. I know. Then I wouldn't tattoo for a couple of weeks or uh, something, you know. Then I'd do another one. I was doing that for a couple of years. Um, and then I met my wife. Uh-huh. Back then, she was my girlfriend. Shout out Mo. Yeah, shout out Mo. Um, so weird how it worked. Um, she happened to be coming home from her sister's house one day. And saw a shop opening on Truth, or that was open on Truth. I'm sorry. Yeah. She decided to stop in, you know, and see what it's about because she knew I had interest in it. Yeah. She gets to talking to the owner, whatever, and and it's just weird. Um, they had just lost all their artists for an incident that happened there. Ah. Uh. And he was looking for artists, and he goes, "Actually, I'm looking for this one guy, you know." And he he dropped my name, and she was like, "No way." That's, no way. Man. She's like, "That's my boyfriend." Huh. And um, it's so weird how that works. So, yeah. yeah. That universe thing, man, that people exactly. talk about, brother. For sure. So she came home and told me. I was like, no, no way. Yeah. So a couple of days later, we went and met him. And, man, he got me in there. And um, I started tattooing. And I, and, I, and I primarily did dark skin the first two years. Mm-hmm. But at that point, I was able to be repetitive daily. Right. Several every day, every day, every day. Yeah, and that, yeah. and that's when you really see growth, you know. Right. It's like anything in life. Rep- yeah. Reputa- yeah, rep- reputation yeah. is, yeah. you know. Rep- yeah, Repetitive, that's huge, man. you know? Yeah, bro, for sure. That And that led you to, I mean, just to estimate, mm-hmm. right? Thousands, bro. Thousands. I've, been, I've been blessed to meet a lot of wonderful, beautiful people yeah, in this man. industry, man. You know, and making an impact, you know, with, with your art and people's request of what they want. The sentimental value, brother, of what you have created for mm-hmm. people, on people, um, whether it's tributes to past ones um child's names i mean just this you know yeah. just boyfriends girlfriends bro just you know, everything that, you know everything that everybody needs and wants you know for example everything i got on on me right right and they all got a certain meaning man they all mm-hmm. got sure. a certain meaning uh, of everything and how you impacted them is man i salute you and i applaud you yes, for that sir. as well man. yes Thank sir, you, man. Yes, sir. The, the honors man. the honors mine yeah man, right, man I, right. I was uh i was thinking about like if if you if the guy let you he was looking for you a right so that's kind of important right because that's how you got your shot yeah so you show up man and you're like I'm Juan Moya you looking yeah, for yeah. me type of thing right so go back to that you know I know you had already done some tattoos already on friends and maybe some family members or whatever but now you got an actual paying customer right like that's in a shop man what that feel like man it, at first it was a little nerve wracking but I knew that that was my it's either now or never. Right, yeah. right. So, you know, I buckled down and um, did what I had to do, and I tried to do it with as much confidence as I could at the yeah. time. Did, uh, did, did you, uh, um, do you remember the tattoo you gave? The very first one, I don't, but I'm pretty sure I came in there and did a couple of the homies first to kind of get acclimated, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have them come up there? 
yeah. had them come up yeah, there yeah. to spot, right? And uh, nobody wanted to work there at first mm. because it was on Truce. Yeah, 40, yeah. And there was an incident that happened, uh, and it, inv- it involved some some losses of people, you know? Yeah. Oh, right, right. And um, yeah, I, I kind of knew the whole it was, I knew the whole situation that had happened. Yeah. I knew the person that was involved. Oh, okay. I didn't know the, the person that actually did it, you know? And, yeah. So uh, it, so we got a so we got a, a real dark uh, impression on it, you know. Until so nobody we, wanted nobody to work there. Nobody wanted to go there. Yeah. Nobody wanted to work there. And customers, loss of customers, right? Right, right. Yeah, so it was kind of a rebuilding thing too. And um, man, it became a machine again after a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and you said, like you said, you was in those repetitions, man. So you was getting just better and better every day, right? Right. And it was on darker skin, so you can only do so much on darker skin, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you kind of learn that as well. Mm. Yeah. What uh? When did that ch- that happen for you though, Moy? I mean, you you said you know you you were probably one of the first Latino you know tattoo artists in the city. You know, for as long as you've been doing it, especially right. Sure. Um, but you do not just tattoos. You do Hispanic, Latino, Mexican cultures. You know, um, what what did that look like, man? Was that always important to you? Did did it you know come upon you at some point, or did was it just a constant request from people? What that look like? I mean, honestly, I got into tattooing because of Chicano culture, mm-hmm. Choloism, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as a kid, you know, we got our hands on some Teen Angel magazines. Not sure if you're familiar with them. Oh, yeah. But, Come you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, and then those, they're full of tattoos and yeah. tattoo drawings and flash. Mm-hmm. So I always got inspired by that big time. Oh, yeah. nice, man. So I've always been into Chicano art. But, That's you know, cool. I had to veer off and do pay my little dues. Right. On truce there, and then yeah, yeah. then I had an opportunity to go to work on white skin several years later. Okay, yeah. and that's when I really got to start actually incorporating different little techniques and stuff. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Color, yeah, yeah color. color. And, I don't, and honestly, at this point, I don't do much color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I and you know, I mean, to even you know, pat you on the back a little bit as well, man. Like I have been. Um, I think you're. It's, I think it's safe to say, and I tell people all the time: if you want black and gray. Moyo's the one to do it. Man. I love it. Yeah, I love it. So I mean, that, I think that's by far your 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 specialty. Mm-hmm. You know, of course. Um, and again, I think skin tone, skin color makes all the difference in the world, man. Depending on what people want, okay. maybe the ink, right? I mean, and, and inks, technique, of course. And techniques, for and sure. Also, with that, there's certain like certain artists, right? Mm-hmm. Certain tattoo artists are have their own specialty. Sure, for sure, you know, for have sure. Have their own specialty, then, and, and I've learned that out throughout my years. You know, yeah. um, you know, can you talk on that? Like, what does it take or the difference? What's all the difference of tattooing and the different techniques or specialties that people have? There's a lot, you know, I mean, with coloring, I mean, there's traditional coloring. There's color realism. Right. Right. There's a lot of variations of just color. You know, it's not just color. Right. And yeah. then same with black and gray. You know, you got fine line, you got bold, you got straight black work. Mm. Yeah. So there's a lot of variations going on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about like I heard of this recently? Uh, 3D tattoos. Have you have you? Do you know anything about that? Like, do you know anybody who does something like that? No. Now, when you say 3D, you mean like popping off the skin? Yeah, like, like, like it looks like it's jumping out at you a little bit. The only 3D I can think of are like um, keloid skin. You know, where it's uh, bubbled up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I think of 3D, I think of that. Now, if you're saying like realism, you can do some realism stuff. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. See, th- that's. Man, you just said something that reminded me. Like, that's another reason why I ain't got my... What do you call it? Keloid skin? Keloid skin, sure. Bro, yeah. that's me. Like, I get a little scratch, it and it just bubbles up. up. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, and, that, and that could probably create a challenge for a tattoo artist, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like on darker skin, you know, when you're dealing with um, African-Americans, yeah. you know, you got to be careful on overworking the skin because it will keloid up a lot easier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Are some, there are some Latinos, too, that will yeah. have that happen. I've always had that issue, man. Yeah. Like, like honestly, like my wife, man. If she was talking with us, she'll tell you how many times she like drew her name like on me or like my arm. You. Yeah, like on purpose, bro. It hurts, right? <laughs> like, are you hurting me? She don't care, and and just to see her name pop out on my skin. You know, and I'm like, dude, stop doing that. You that, know? that could be your histamine too. You know, a lot, a lot of it has to do with <laughs> yeah, that too. Seriously, yeah, you know. Yeah, you it got some be. allergies there going on. Man, I mean, maybe that's what's wrong. Maybe you know what, Juan? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I need to take her to the doctor with me. Like, man. hey, test her. Am I allergic to this or not? <laughs> I'm gonna wild. do that. I'm gonna do that's that. Wild. Nah, but um, so, so you was out on truce, man, 
And and then you said, where did you go after that? You said you Broadway, went, West Broadway, yeah, to Broadway. And I remember you being there. Actually, mm-hmm. I remember you. You were there for how long? Were you there for? I would say close to ten years. Yeah, I was gonna say you were there for a while. Yeah, I remember because I know several people that went there just to see you yeah. in those ten years. That 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 shop was a machine. Um, and the owner did really well there. Um, man, there was a lot of people coming through there. What was the name of that one? It was Freaks on Broadway. Freaks on Broadway. That's yeah, right. Yeah, Freaks on Broadway. Yeah, I remember that. Um, so, d- what do you remember the first time somebody was like, "All right, man." I need a whole back piece or I need a chest piece. And, you know, like the tattoos, right? They're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Talk about that, man. Do you remember those those first times? I don't think it happened like overnight kind of deal. I think there was little yeah. sequences that kind of built up to that. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, nowadays, you know, I used to get intimidated by stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you got to worry about composition and all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff like that, but... And then, you know, moving around their body and everything, man. Like that, And then you got to make sure they're going to actually commit to it. You know, it's a big commitment. Man. To say it and to do it are two opposite things, you know. And then you got the people that are jumping and, are, you know, making noises and whimpering out. Man, the I read an article that. that's Dak Prescott. You know who Dak Prescott is? Oh, yeah. He's the quarterback of the Cowboys, uh, all right? Yeah, I know where you're going with that. <laughs> you know where I'm going, right? Did yeah. you hear that about it, what he did? That's a, That's trending. He got put to sleep. It's trendy. Just so really? he can get his whole leg piece. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like he lit. Like he went, got. I don't even know Oxygen, what. Whatever he put uh, that. What do they call those pe- doctors? Uh, what? Like a dentist still? Anesthesia. Yeah, anesthesia. Yeah, anesthesiologist. Yeah. Anesthesiologist. Damn, I'm see, and uh, got put to sleep. Yeah. So that's so something the, new now, or something. You know, one thing that kind of freaked me out too. That's kind of you know, it's it's kind of new too. I think it's probably been out from like maybe. 10 years or so is that numbing cream right like they mm. came out with that numbing cream so that that's become quite the, that's 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 quite the trend as well too is yeah it? oh yeah so yeah. you have people show up in your chair and be like all right man i'm hitting myself with this cream real quick for sure for no sure way. yeah yeah damn so not no guys right ain't no dude, you know, it's a little bit of everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah man. yeah man. Do, do, do you ever think to yourself man this person they, they ain't ready for this <laughs> I don't. I don't try to judge people like that. You know what I mean. Yeah. If it's going to help you sit better and take the edge off, great answer. More power yeah. to that, you. You know, that's, that's true. That's, that's a good accurate. answer. Yeah, man. That's that's real too, right? I mean, they're your customers, man. Yeah. Same you with know, going back to Dak as well. I don't judge him. Um, if you got the money to do that, hey, uh, that's that's facts, bro. Because I mean, that's not a cheap process. You know, that's um. Well, yeah. and you and you said it earlier, bro. You said you know commitment, right? Like, I mean, talk about commitment. Hey, if I show one, if I schedule an appointment, I'm like, hey, bro, I'm getting put to sleep. You're gonna do my whole back. Right. You know I'm committed, right? You yeah. got that don't whole time do to do it. And yeah, uh, do. several people are involved in that too. That are actually tattooing. When they do that, they'll usually hire like four artists to work on them at once oh. and get it done in a period of time. You know, because you can only be down under for so long. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I hear oh, I hear man. six to eight hours pretty often. Yeah. And I believe Post Malone started that trend. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. God. And now there's a, a lot of. You know, a lot of artists that are doing it. Like I said, you got to have the money. Is it, it, I mean, you know, the one thing I hear about people who get tattoos is there's always like that more sensitive part of the body, right? Right. So what would you say in your experience, like people are like, ow, on this part the most? I, honestly, I think that's subjective. I think yeah, that right, everybody's sure. different. I've worked on backs before and person has been totally fine, on, falling asleep on the back. Yeah. Uh, and then I go to their leg and... They right. they come unhinged, yeah. yeah, and vice versa, you know. Yeah, but, but there are some general areas that are always going to be a little more probably spicier than others. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. You man. Know, your torso is always going to be probably up there. Yeah, I heard that the uh, like the rib cage is real tender, man. Mm. You know, down somewhere down there. I, yeah. I I don't. I think I I got a stomach piece or whatever, but I don't remember that too much. It's a long time ago. What what's that? What what is the mindset you see more or less whenever people come in for a tattoo? Like particularly, not somebody experienced, right? I'm talking about that first tattoo. What does that mindset look like when you are they like nervous? Are they excited? Is, I mean, it's probably subjective too, right? I've seen it all. You seen it you all? know you, you even see people come in with someone else talking yeah. for them. Yeah. You know whether it's a boyfriend or something, and they're telling you where they want it at. So you see, have you seen people like come in? schedule appointment they say they're you know, on their appointment and then they leave and not show you mean or just leave like oh, i ain't doing this after all they'll more than likely not show most often hardly oh, ever okay. maybe once 
I can think of one time where someone was actually sitting in the chair, yeah, getting ready to start, yeah. and then they bailed. You know, they couldn't do it. That uh, happened once. I got you, bro. I got you. So, man, the Chicano art, man. Who's that? Who's that artist? That influence that you paid attention to a lot, man. I mean, of course, um, he's a Mexicano, of course, but I feel like he plays a big part in a lot of Chicano households. Um, Jesus Liguera. Oh, yeah. I think you mentioned it before, Dan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, man. Yeah. I, I have. It. You know, through the calendarios. You know, mm-hmm. everybody had the calendars in their house, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. from La Fama or from, you know, Reynas. You know, a lot or, of people who have that tat- those tattoos incredible on them. Incredible artist, yeah. man. Incredible artist. He's a big one for me as far as that. But Chicano style, I mean, there's been a lot of artists, you know, yeah. over the years. I remember the Lowrider magazines, man. Like those were good, would, the little would, sections. And yeah, then they, they had would throw in those yeah. sections and shit. Like, and then they got their own magazine, Lowrider yeah. Arte, I believe uh-huh, it was. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you ever get any art in any of that? I was or never, submit or anything? I was never really big into submitting or nothing like uh, that. I'm more of a um, stay in my little corner kind of yeah, guy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I have learned that you got to put yourself out there nowadays a little bit to to be relative otherwise you're gonna lose that bro well, you relevant bro <laughs> like, yeah you, you, better, man. Everybody, everybody, you know man. word of <laughs> mouth man word of mouth and that that's kind of where i was going with your story bro like you know yeah, you talked sure. about the, you talked about those first couple customers you know you went from truce to freaks on broadway i mean at some point Juan, you became a household name for people man like what do you remember that time when you were like man i'm getting a lot of people trying to schedule some appointments have to turn them down or anything i don't think it's quite I don't, maybe on the outside looking it seems like that but yeah. i feel like i just feel like it's pretty even flow you know oh for real i really do yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and anymore there's so many great artists out there nowadays yeah. you know and you know you can't really compete with anybody you got to compete with yourself and try to be better every day yeah. sure, if you're worried about the guy down the street around the corner you're gonna just fail you know you're gonna you're gonna drive yourself crazy that's facts man that's facts that's good attitude man what's the last tattoo you got bro (laughs) that's embarrassing um come on man i don't get tattooed much anymore i need to there's a couple i need to get that that are on my list but the last one i got was probably from my kids Ah, okay okay on christmas christmas their name or um let's see this is actually like they've done it a couple of times but they've all done their name then i let them do a little Little knickknacks that they kind of into, so you know, at the time. So they're tattooing you. Yes. That's yeah. Dope. That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah, just a cool little memory to have on Christmas Day. Um, yeah. You know, they get older and I'm gone. They'll be like, hey, remember that Christmas dad took us down <laughs> yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Hell but, yeah, uh, man. I mean, I'm thinking, man, if I let my kids tattoo me, I don't know what that would look like, Juan. Yeah, but, but hey, it is a memory though. It, and you know, at that point for me, it doesn't really matter because yeah. I know that they did it, and it's from them. That's yeah, facts, bro. Yeah. And, and, and that's something that they're gonna grow up. You know, grow as long with you, and as you become an elder, they'll remember that. It's Man. right there with whatever it is that they put on you, whether it's a name, whether it's a picture, for sure. It's a memory that they're gonna have forever. Yeah, even when I'm going into the afterlife, you know. That's right. They'll bro. have that. That's yeah, right. That's awesome, man. So speaking of your little corner, man. Right behind you, Juan, you got, man, man some incredible art, bro. Thank you. And you did all these pieces up on behind you on the wall? I think I did most of them. Um, I know this one's a gift from a buddy. That's a gift from a buddy. Um, I think everything else pretty much is just different eras. Of, this big black and gray one was when I was into airbrushing yeah. wow. about 10 years ago. I was really heavily into that. Then I got into colored pencil really big, which is... Yeah. The Mahomes, Mahomes and, 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 uh, and that's what I've, I've been doing colored pencils the last 10 years, really heavily okay. into that. Okay. But I want to venture off into oil painting. Okay. I feel like that's like the canvas and stuff. Right. Or wood. Wood. But yeah. For, I feel like that for me anyway is the final frontier of the journey for art. For Juan Moya and right. his art. Yeah. So, so I see Danny Threjo right there. I right. see Carlos Santana. You know, I, I know these celebrities that you've got I mean, those bro. are signed Mahomes you know they're they're, they're all signed they're all they're all signature man um man which is incredible right the list goes on bro the list yes. goes on i i uh you know let i'll let you say it which what which other ones have all those have you have you done about total of probably like 20 oh man, man. That's, I, more, I, that's more than i was gonna say i definitely try to um collect chicano yeah. people's art you know like you know whether they're actors or singers yeah but um how, how would you come about meeting that bro mm. stalking you know <laughs> <laughs> In the See, bushes, bro? where are you gonna where is this person gonna be and then yeah. you know or is this guy gonna perform here you know yeah. like with Tra- with trejo for example he was um 
Comic Con. He was going to be there, oh, and nice. I knew it. And so I whipped up a piece and yeah. knew that I'd be able to meet him there. For sure, you can meet him there because you get in line, you pay yeah. a little fee, and you get to meet them. Yeah. But other people, I would take a gamble, and they go in concert, and I go look looking for them. And yeah. I've been pretty lucky with some people. The the Trejo piece, man, like um, that's pencil. Is it? Pencil? That's graphite. Yes. Okay. So is is that a scene from a movie? Or that, what is that, a photo? Or? So that, I'm really big into photography. Okay. Not actually taking photos, but appreciating it. Sure. Yeah. Um, that was taken by Estefan Orio. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Okay. But he's photographed a lot of people. And he's my probably my favorite Chicano photographer, okay. artist of all time. He's, man, you name it, he's actually got him on film. Yeah. And he's all about 35 millimeter film. Oh, okay. Um, he's awesome. But yeah, that's one of his photos that I used as reference. And right. Right. And got him to sign it. I actually have a piece from Esteban signed. A piece that he did? A piece that he took. Yeah. I repainted, airbrushed it, mailed it to California. Wow. Gave him a piece to keep, and he signed it for me and mailed it back. Wow. So that's one of my one of my favorites, along with Carlos. Carlos yeah. is up there. So all these other ones that you did, bro, they're just hanging at the house, man? You know, I have, man, we have nowhere to hang them. Pretty small house, but... I have so many put away. Oh, bro. Yeah. There are so many just, they're just treasure, put away. One, one day I would like to show them. Yeah. You know, maybe getting one of these galleries one year and um. Well, by far, show. man, by far, that 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 should happen. And, yeah. you know, we, we know some people, man. We, we, we uh, know some people, Juan. <laughs> we, and, and, you know, and, you, know people, you said a magic word that, that made me remember something because you yeah. said gallery. Hey. And for people that don't know, yeah. Juan... Moya's art is in the Nelson Atkins uh, art gallery oh, right yeah. now. Right now, man. And uh, Juan, I want you to talk about that piece, brother, because I saw it. I saw. I went there uh, last week two or two weeks, weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, took my son on spring break. He was on spring break, nice. and I was like, "Hey, man, I want to take you to go see this this art, man. This exhibit, you know, yeah, um, a layered presence is the exhibit. Exactly. But talk talk about that piece, brother." The actual piece itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first off, shout out for to Jenny Mendez for even shout out Jenny, recommending man. my name. Yeah. I love Jenny. She's like a big She's sister to me. Yeah, Always had my awesome. back since day one. But that particular piece, you know, um, when she told me about it, and then I got to talk to Stephanie, which is a director there at the museum. Mm -hmm. And once I knew it was a done deal, I was one of the 22 artists that was going to be in there. Yeah. I knew I had to bring the West Side into the Nelson. Yeah. You know, I, so I, I just took that opportunity, and I'm, um, Made it happen, you yeah. Know? But the, but the piece though, man, because I think some people they don't know, like they're trying, you know, trying to vision this piece that you made. Okay. Talk about that piece you made, brother. Okay, so um, I mean, at the very um, the Gage stairs are in there. I don't know if you're familiar with the Gage Park stairs. Oh yeah, yeah. on Twenty Third Street that I painted. I, I painted those years ago too. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I had to throw them in there because that was a hangout staple for me and the homies. We always hung out there. Yeah, man. So I had that in there. Um, at the very top, I did. Uh, the Virgen de Guadalupe, which I felt like she was always watching over us because yeah. we hung out there all the time and escaped a lot of drama, missed, a lot of drama there. Lot of drama. Yeah. So I got that at the top. And at the very bottom, I wanted to do a low rider, and it was really hard to pick one, but I ended up going with my comp, Frank Kiros, who's had an Impala for forever, bro. Uh, uh, and when I mean had one, has one. He actually drives it every day. It's an everyday driver, but it's like uh, okay. it's like a show car. Yeah. So I put that at the base of it, and let's see. Going up, I had to incorporate a Jesus and the Guerra piece, which is um, you know, the Aztec part. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I have the city there on the side, a little bit of the skyline. Yeah. And then on the right side, I got the Scout because I always felt like the Scout was overlooking the west side. Man. Yeah. Oh, yep. For sure. And then of course I had to get um, Crown's liquor sign in there. Because I felt like crowns. That yeah. was a spot, too, man. It was in a lot of good ways and a lot of bad ways, you know. <laughs> man, know Everybody man. got memories at crowns, bro. You know, and, and for me, that, that particular little area of the drawing is a double-edged sword because, for me, it just brought a lot of bad memories. Mm. You know, I grew up in um, my father-in-law was an alcoholic. Yeah. And I knew he was always hanging out down there. And I knew that a lot of that came from there. You know, and then it's not the store's fault. But yeah. I knew that that was a big part that I wanted in there. And that's in, so that's in there. Let's see what else. Of course, I have the ghetto bird. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah. part. You always hear that, you know. Yes. Oh, yeah, man. And then, of course, the Aztec calendar behind it. Because everybody knows the Aztec calendar. That's a mm -hmm. big part. If you're a Mekano, 
Yeah. You, you know that. You He's know that's culture, the counter. Man. Yeah. The, the the piece though, man, just hearing you talk about man, it, describe Juan, it man. man, like you could tell like every single element you put in there, it was intentional. It was for, for one sure. reason or the other. Right. And it you, it has some sentimental value to you, right? It really does. It man, really does. That's all, man. It's a badass piece of art. And let me tell you something, man. Shout out shout out to Mo again because hey. I saw her online, man, selling these hoodies. Right on. And uh this is Man, this was like when we man November December. Yeah, okay. I said I said Mo, I need to get one. Um, that's the piece, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's that's it. the piece. That's it. That's dope. Man. And it's on a three foot circular board, so it's three feet. It's pretty big. Yeah, that's incredible, man. Man, I, this it's it's nice, bro. I mean, thank honestly, you, thank man, you. I really appreciate. I, that. I love the V hen on there, man. I love the whole thing because. You know, my family one is is actually part of my family. My dad's side is from the west side, right there on Fairmount. Okay. So, so like you know, you drive over, you keep driving on Fairmount, a little cliff. You you drive right on the twenty third. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I grew up right behind there. Yeah, you west grew up Bluff. on the bluffs. I yeah, think we might have shot fireworks at each other maybe, back in the day. Maybe, man. Man. I don't know. I don't know. Shooting up, shooting down. I, we'll call them fireworks, right? Yeah. Uh, but no, man. I mean. Man, that's a salute, man. That's a, that's a, a salute, salute, man. man. That sure, art, man. that art piece, brother. You, salute, Cheers, salute to you, salute, man. We always do a salute, bro. Because, man, that that piece is legendary, brother. It is. I mean, and 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 now it's in the Nelson Atkins. So, did you have that piece before Nelson, or did you create it, or how? Would that would that look like? No. Once they gave me the go ahead that I'm going to be in there. That's when I started getting the wheels turning, and wow. that's when I created it. Wow, I mean, man, it's it's a fantastic piece, man. But it it was born on the stairs. It was right. It was you put, for you sure. put all that on the stairs, right? And how long how long ago did you put that on the stairs? You remember that? That was a redo of the stairs. Initially, man, I was probably like 19 years old when they first when we first painted it, wow. because before then it was just concrete with a yeah. bunch of gang graffiti yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually donated my time to do to paint that the yeah. first time. Yeah. Is there any plans to touch it up? Or you know. So the funny thing you're talking about it right now, they're they're getting a thing together to redo it. But right now, it has to go through a process to where they're gonna have to have different artists. They're gonna vote for different people to see who they want to do it. Come on, man. But wow. but um, you know, I got some. That's cool. Right? It, I, I get it. Yeah. But um. I'm going to fight my hardest to get it because I really want to redo it, you know? Yeah, well, check it out, man. Right here, Interrupt KC. Interrupt We're right KC. there with you, brother. We We're there. right there man, with thanks. you, man. We need, I mean, to let, we need to let Wong bless, that, to bless them stairs again. Yeah, man, and, for sure, man. And I, I'm more talking about it. I know they're going to have, like, a voting thing here coming up real soon. I wish I knew the date. Who's, um, who's uh, in charge of that? Or? Matt, I think it's going to happen at Matty Rose, but... Um, okay. There's some, maybe you can get a hold of through Jenny, and um, there's a couple people there you can talk to. Maybe we know a couple people. Man, we, yeah. Yeah, man, but I'm really, that? I'm really hoping to get that back. I mean, hey, for real, that should, bro. I'm as really, should. really praying and hoping. I'm gonna fight my hardest to try to. How many times have you actually painted those those stairs, bro? Like. It was done twice, but I've touched it up quite a bit because yeah, people yeah. are always doing gang. Yeah, 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 whether it's the East Side or Kansas, or know. some type of vandalism, man. Right. Obviously, yeah. that's just a, the the you know immature youth, you know, that doesn't. Yeah. Uh, we were we were all there, right? Yeah, we were all, we all there, yeah. you know. But you know, it, it, it's yeah, by far, man. You deserve to uh, re- regain that title, bro. The man. the piece though, Juan at the Nelson. I went there and uh, I was man. I was just I was. You know, what, looking at your piece, and I was just like, yeah. "Man, this is incredible! That's like, all incredible pencil. piece of art." I appreciate do, that. Do you sell that, or what do you do with? Do you put it in the Hall of Fame somewhere? No. <laughs> I mean, what do you what, do with it, that, and, man? And, and, and I know you got the shirt, right? You yeah. sell the shirts, you got the merch. Do you make? How about prints? Is there other? Well, prints we do you? prints too, yeah. yeah man. And then the original piece. I have a couple of people that want it. I'm not sure where I'm going to want to let it go yet. You know. Uh, yeah. But um, it'll go to a good home in the end. Yeah, yeah. You're talking yeah, about the sure. original? Yeah. The one the in the one. Nelson? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, and shout out to the 21 other artists there. I'm blessed to be hey. having my work showcased next to them. Yeah. Some great artists in Kansas City. It real icons, man. Isaac yeah, and yeah, Rodrigo, for sure. man. We had them, and, and they awesome. were talking about it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They got some great work there, too. Jose yeah. Faust, Banya yeah. Soto. I mean, there's a lot of people. Jenny. Jenny. Jenny got Jessica's. a piece in there. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. It's awesome that they a lot of good artists, man. You know, from the from the city uh, up in there. Is is there other you know art galleries or anything like that, that you've been asked to put some art at? No. Well, you know, there's one in Chicago 
it's it's kind of like a bank gallery. Okay. I'm looking into that to possibly putting some stuff in that. Is that the Chicano Museum of Art? No, no it's a, it's something different. Yeah, it's, okay. it's got like it's a bank and a gallery kind of together. Oh, yeah. okay. I know you say you kind of keep to yourself. But hey, bro. <laughs> right, too, man. I know, I know that. But man, with what you got behind you, brother, what too you talented, got at home, man. I mean, what, what, uh, you know, say you got at home, and and to have all this treasure that you created, man, that mm. we all love. I, I love art. I love Thank your you. art. Yeah, you know, and, that. and by far, man, if there is a way that you can get somebody in Chicago that is in the Chicano museum of fine art that maybe is watching this on youtube or spotify or wherever we're at mm -hmm. man holla at my boy juan boy man, man. Holla at juan. Man, i don't know if you ever been up to that museum though in chicago i've never been to chicago it, it's dope i've been there at Any... least twice really yeah because my my uh i got yeah. some family up there that live there it's in the pilsen neighborhood it's a <laughs> mexican neighborhood yeah and um i've been there at least twice man and and you know, the art really has not changed in the two times I went there because the pieces that are in there, man, they're just amazing. Is yeah. this Latino or Chicano? Yeah. It's, it's all, it, no, it's it's like Mexican, Chicano. Chicano art. Okay. I yeah. wonder, if, wonder if Chich Marin has anything in there. Maybe. You know, Maybe. He's, he's coming. I know, he's man. Coming. We got, we got, we, we didn't get tickets to that, man. I was it's trying to say, hey, man, what's up on a, what's up on a little podcast interview? <laughs> man, he'd be a great <laughs> person dope, to sit man. down, man. He would hey, be. you know, that'd be a good one for you to get, uh, get a little drunk. Oh, on man, that, I got, man. might have a little something <laughs> in the works. Yeah. That's something in the works, like, bro. I'm stalking, I'm stalking. Uh -huh. man, that's good, man. That's you know, the cool good. thing about these drawings is, um, the stories when I meet these people, you man, know, yeah. every one of them is different. And man, it's they're all so tell, tell us your favorite one so far. Is there a favorite top three? They're all they're all they're all my favorite for because I actually accomplished what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I, the funniest one is probably George Lopez. Um, oh, yeah, right. George, you know, yeah. I, um, I knew he was here with the, the Kings of well, was it the Kings of Comedy, but. Them guys or whatever, yeah, like a yeah. black and Recent. brown one or something, maybe. Man, it was like with DJ Hewley or D H Hewley, D L Hewley and them guys, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cedric, Cedric and them. So I knew he was gonna come that weekend, and um, I got a piece ready, and um, I didn't catch him that night. So I get on my phone and look at flights that are leaving out of Kansas City to L A the next morning. Oh, no way. And bro. he didn't strike me the type to sit around Kansas City for a while, you know. Right, right. So I go out to the airport at four in the morning, and my wife's like. What are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. So I get out there, go to the terminal. There's a gentleman sitting by himself with the hat low, tucked in. You could tell he was just trying to take a nap four in the morning, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he was already checked in. And I was on the opposite side. I was like, Damn, there Damn. goes that opportunity. So this lady happened to look my way, sitting next to him. So, of course, you know, I flag yeah, her yeah, down yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, me? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then I pointed to him like, you know, tap him on the shoulder or whatever. So she was pointing at him like him, like, yeah, yeah. So she woke him up and he gets up, you know, and he's fucking looking, he's looking pretty like he had a long night. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He like hadn't even gone to his hotel yet. Yeah. Like he just went to the airport from mm -hmm. wherever. Oh man. So he comes over to me and um, he's like, hey, what's up? What's up, man? And um, I show him, hey, I mean, I'm really a big fan. I would really love to get my, um, my artwork that I drew of you signed. So I pull it out. I say, oh, that's cool. That's cool. And he signs it. And he says, um, well, what else you got? And I was like, that's it. And he goes, no, good, get the fuck out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I got, I got what I wanted, and um, I got the fuck out of there. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if you guys cuss on yeah, it. I'm sorry. No, nah, you're good, good bro. Yeah, you're nah, good, bro. So I thought that was pretty epic because that's George Lopez, that's you know? Him, bro. Hell yeah. yeah. I, I would remember that one, too, right? Man. You know, get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, it was that's awesome. Him, he woke him from his beauty sleep, exactly, man. Exactly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and you said night. that was at four in the morning it was four in the morning yeah casey and i the old yeah, one yeah. so you had to get up at like three right wow. i was on a mission once i get the tunnel vision it's going you oh, know yeah so with drawing those deals man i mean the detail you know and each one is different the size of it or everything right. else mm -hmm. like how, what's the what's the length of time i know you got you say you get in that tunnel vision you get in that zone yeah you know, right so what's the longest that one took and what's the shortest that one took? Well, the one at the museum has taken, that one took over 250 hours. Wow. Um, I did one back when the the Chiefs won the first Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Not the first, the second Super Bowl, but the, 
yeah. first one that we know of. Right, mm-hmm. right. I did a piece, and that one took close to 300 hours. Wow. So those are probably my two longest ones. Yeah. That's, that's for, you know, I'm just doing the math in my head. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's like six weeks for the one at the Nelson. Mm-hmm. And you said how many hours was that? 300? About 300, yeah. Man, that's like seven, eight weeks. Yeah. Wow. So, but, so, Cheech. He's not, I mean, he's just right around the corner, he man. Is. And I don't know if you're, you're familiar with Cheech, but he's an avid collector of Chicano art. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I don't mean like Mexican-American, uh, Mexican art or yeah, yeah. He's Chicano, Chicano art, you know, you got, yeah. you know, born in America, yeah. or, um, Mexican parents, you know. Right. And I know he has a lot of artwork. I missed his touring um, gallery that was going around a couple of years ago and i really i was really bummed out about that yeah. but i know he has a permanent one somewhere in california i would love to I think check out some time LA, right? i, I believe so LA. yeah I, I think i've read up on that i've seen that too and it's you know raised my eyebrow man Did, yeah. isn't there a park out there that's chicano a, park chicano park I believe that's you ever been there i believe that's in san diego if i remember okay. correctly. i've never been there either no right yeah. sounds like a park you might want to visit for brother. sure for sure <laughs> You might get some inspiration Definitely. out of there, or maybe bless it. I don't know. You yeah, know? true that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you have you have these other you know Hispanic, Latino, Chicano celebrities you're talking about, right? I mean, I'm looking at these athletes, man. Patrick Mahomes and Selvi. I mean, these these two dudes really represent each team that they're on, man. What what is a good story between one of these guys? Well, the 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 Patrick one, this is not too exciting because um. I'm fortunate enough to know his barber. Ah, uh, okay. Purple label, Duan Bond. Yeah, shout out, yeah. Duan. Shout out. I've been tattooing him for years, but it was during COVID. I had it up, and he, I happened to be tattooing Duan, and he was like, hey, man, I'm going to see Pat this weekend. You know, let me try to get that signed for you. So he took it and got it signed during COVID. So I was stoked about that because mm. um, Salvi, I was fortunate enough to get that signed at his house. I, oh, okay. I did a couple of tattoo sessions there for him. Oh, nice. On and, him, right? Oh, yep, yeah, on Selby. So, yeah, yeah I got to, dope. got to hang out with him at his house a couple of times. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. Got to hold um, hardware, you know, the Silver Slug Awards, um, yeah. the MVP trophies and stuff. Yeah. That was awesome. Golden Glove. Didn't get Golden Glove. Golden Glove, Glove yeah. You gave him that World Series tat that he has under his, on his bicep. Mm-hmm. Of- no, that was he got that in Surprise, Arizona when they were uh, – Oh, when they were down there? Yes, yeah. Which one did you get? So I, he got several from me. Um, he has his chest done. He has his forearms done. He got all the all-stars he's been in okay. on his forearm. Then he's got a piece for his wife on his forearm. Nice. Oh, I apologize. I, I, I'll, I'll no, tell you it's all good. That. Yeah. What, uh, what's the craziest uh, story you got by giving a tattoo? I know you got to have a crazy-ass story, man, like just giving somebody a tattoo Somebody freak out, <laughs> scream, oh, man. run out. Fain, I, you know, I know, I know that some people have fainted. You know, and I think somebody told me that before. I, I, don't, I don't think it was you, but somebody told me it that, that they'll faint and you just shh, keep on going with the flow, man. No, you don't keep going with the flow. Really? Well, this guy told me, so I know I, it wasn't <laughs> you, man. Somebody said, man, I just kept on. Going. One's like that wasn't me, bro. That wasn't me. Yeah. No, you gotta, you gotta definitely look out for their well being. You know, you gotta yeah. make sure you don't want them to fall out on the floor, bust their head, or yeah. You know, so you got to wake them up and make sure they're cool and then yeah. move forward. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying, bro, like I see these videos, man, and I've seen one. I'll just I'll just describe it as quick as quickly as I can. It's a it's a dude. It, OK, no, it's this girl. She's getting a tattoo and he's holding her hand, but he's videoing her because he's expecting this reaction. <laughs> and she, she the, the artist starts, mm, you know, as soon as that needle hits her skin. She's screaming. I mean, screaming, screaming. And the the guy, he's just filming her, just like, ah, you know, like, look at her, you know, she's freaking out. And I'm like, dude, like, that's your chick, man. You putting her on social media, you know? I don't know. Maybe they did it on purpose. I don't know why. But you got, I'm just saying, man, you you have to have a crazy ass story. If so, it would have been years ago, you know? Uh, I mean, nothing too crazy, like, that stands out too, too wild like that. Yeah. You would think. Yeah. <laughs> I you mean, you. Think. Well, that's cool. And if you do, you know, we yeah. tell, you tell us after the camera. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be me. I don't know. Yeah, I might be the one. You might, might be, be like, bro. One. I I didn't think you was gonna act he like this. Screaming man. and yelling, man. Yeah, man, With that skin be bubbling up, Bubble, bubbling up skin <laughs> and everything. One, you just never know, <laughs> bro. Awesome. Man, all right. So uh, I want to I want to pull out something too. You know, to to um, add to your, you know, Accomplish- accomplishments, yeah. brother. So um, here we go. 
we're gonna talk about this right here, man. Look at that, yeah. right? And uh, Boulevard beer. Boulevard beer, man. And this was your drawing that was uh, given to them to put on their beer cans, man. Um, what was that like, bro? What was that like, man? Well, let me back up a little. Um, that all came to be because Jenny Mendez, back to Jenny Mendez. Right. Awesome Jenny Mendez. Um, she invited me to be their artist of the month for the Dia de los Muertos monthly, well, annual thing. The celebration. They for right. Maddie Rhodes. For Maddie Rhodes. Uh -huh. So she invited me to do that. Um, and that's actually part of my, one of my pieces I've done for that particular show. Right. Um, we were doing it. I was showing her the pieces or whatever, and she had mentioned that Boulevard does a little collaboration with Maddie Rose every year, and she would like for me to submit something to possibly be on a can. Nice. And the profits would go to Maddie Rose and the kids. So, of course, I jumped on board, and I was fortunate enough to have that done. You know, mm. I, I walked by Boulevard Brewery as a kid, you Bro. know. Yeah, and I mean, that's, that, that's a staple on the West Side. You know? yeah. So to have that done, I was I was... I was really stoked about that, really honored, really. Right, right, right. Can you explain, for those people that might not know, you know, is there any, any story with this, or is it just all freehand? Like it's pre that's pretty much a Katrina, and it actually it's inspired by some clay work. Okay. You know, in Mexico they have a lot of clay work yeah. and stuff like that. So that's, that. And like I said, that is just the centerpiece of the actual piece they use for the Maddie Rhodes Oh, show. Yeah, yeah. And that was actually the first show they had at their new place, so that mm. was... That was quite the honor to be the first, yeah. you know, Day of the Dead show there at Maddie Rhodes. Yeah. How many pieces did you have there then? Do you remember? I think I had six, six or seven. Six of them. Yeah, and I was fortunate, fortunate enough to get rid of all of them. Mm. That's great. That man. was awesome. That's great. That's the opera in the background. I mean, come yeah. on. I was, I was yeah. just thinking, I was saying, we could lay this thing man, right that, here, blend right in. Bro. Hey, man, it, what a better place, man, than to show that and, and uh, you know, with, with here, with our... It's like our trade. It had, to, it had to be. It had to be a, a special feeling, man. Just knowing that Boulevard beer, right? Like I right. tell my kids, like, man, y'all don't understand. I remember this place when it was just a little corner. Remember that? Micro. That it, it was actually a microbrewery yeah. at first. Yeah. It, and just to see it now, it owns that whole area down right. there, right? Yeah. I think the expansion that they've had throughout the years, man. And like you said, brother, um, walking past it, man. Yeah. For as as a young as we were young and seeing it, seeing how it grew. And then for you to put your art on these cans, yeah. man. An, but but I'm saying like they called you right, or right, somebody right. told you yeah. like, hey man, we're gonna we're gonna take this piece. It had to be a special feeling, man. It, it was a special feeling, but not as special as people like yourselves appreciating it and purchasing it, purchasing them and putting them in your house, you yeah. know, and showing. Well, dude, it's, it's unopened, bro. Look, the, 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 I mean, and, still, and you know what's great is that. Uh, shout out to my boy Andy, man, Andy Lopez, man. He he got this for me. For my birthday, man, and it's right. it's even dated for when it was. They brewed you know, it, yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I don't know. I thought like this, real yeah, dope, man. Big time, man. Big time, man. And and man, Juan, dude, you're so humble, bro. You're so humble about it, man. Yeah, honestly, because I, be, I mean, man, I'd be pouring it out talking about it, man. man. I'd, be, I'd be like, give me that beer, man. We are gonna drink this right now. <laughs> <laughs> the ex but, the excitement comes from you guys supporting me, yeah. and anybody out there supporting me. That that's what really. That's what really triggers me and gets me happy, you know, yeah, the man. support. Yeah, man. Especially over all the years. Sp speaking of that, Juan, so back to your journey, man, because uh, you're still on your journey, bro. For sure, for sure. Like, who was those early supporters, man? Like, I know we, we heard about the person who didn't support you early on. <laughs> yeah. Who was those, like, really early, like, people in your life, friends, family, whoever, you know, teachers? I know you talked about Miss Webb. Maybe somebody that's still with you right yeah. now, right? Who's those supporters? I mean, I think it's just pretty much, honestly, um, I feel like the 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 people. Yeah. In general, I don't really like. I mean, right now at this the last twenty five years, my big supporter has been my wife. Mm. That's my big supporter, shout you know. Out Morris, yeah. man. Um, shout but, out Mo, man. Yeah, shout out. Uh, yeah, that's that's my backbone there. The community, I'm sure by far, man. I mean, just like right. we even said, right? Everybody keeps on coming, and mm -hmm. that's probably even more generational, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, like me. And my, my kids are now of age that they want, my daughters, they want to get tattoos, you right. know what I'm saying, and, and stuff like that. So I think that that all trickles down to the support will be your friends, their friends, and yep. then right. their kids, yep. and then stuff like that, right? Yeah, for sure. And I can't leave out Jenny. Jenny's been a big supporter of mine yeah. from day one, you mm -hmm. know. 
Um, and also going back to Joe Arce, Joe Arce's always Shout had my Joe, back. Man. And, you know, I didn't have the, the best teenage years. I was a knucklehead, you know. Sure. I, I had bad, ugly reputation, you know. And, yeah. um, and he always had my back. Mm-hmm. Jenny, yeah. Jenny's always had my back. I never had a college education. I feel like um, if you had a college education, you were definitely put on a little bit of a pedestal and mm-hmm. kind of, you know, pushed, right, right. pushed a little bit. You know, one thing, you know, that I always tell and say um, to people that – you know, like we said earlier, you know, we all we all have a past. It's, it's part of living, part of growing yep, up, you know. Sure. And one thing I like telling people, too, is that just because you knew me then don't mean you know me now. That's right. You know what I mean? For sure. And with, regardless of what type of uh, um, past as youth that we did, man, we're a whole different person. And, and this man. all right here, brother, from this, Nelson, all your celebrities, your tattooing, Man, yeah. Again, brother. I think I think honestly, bro, uh, D. Rod, it's just a, it's just a matter of time after you have your own little gallery, man. To put all those little pieces in. Oh, well, I would love that. There. That would be awesome for sure. Yeah. I mean, you you know, I'm thinking like the West Side, right? Is right there, and I don't know what it was called before the crossroads. I think we told David Lopez it was called. You don't cross those roads uh, <laughs> back in the day, you know. Uh, but but now you know the art galleries over there, right? right. I mean, man, there's so many art galleries, man. We need somebody to holler at our boy Juan, man, to get For him sure. get him up there in the in one of those spots. Yeah, man. Yeah, no doubt. Um, what other plans do you got? Anything else going on? I mean, but I know you again. You know, you're pretty humble about everything. But is there any type of thing that you want to kind of go to i know you talked about oil painting you know uh what about conventions you've been at conventions and stuff too right you mean tattoo conventions yeah yeah i've done a couple i'm not really into tattoo conventions there's just a lot don't get me wrong i like going to them yeah years ago i loved going to them um 20 years ago you know Mm. and collect work here and there but i don't really do too many conventions okay do you do you do you have a piece one that you did you know for somebody a tattoo piece um, that sticks with you and says, man, I love that piece. I have a lot that I like, but I think you're always striving for the perfect one. Right. And I don't know. Um, I'm still striving. Yeah. Right. But I'm just trying a, to learn, you know. Yeah. We're always our worst critic, man. It's something yeah. that yeah. somebody like myself or anybody who you uh, give that art piece for on their body or, right. or even drawing it, you know, um, they will love it, but you know, again, you know, you're your worst critic, and you see all the flaws. Man, for sure. I mean, just even us here man. doing what we're doing, right? Like, <laughs> I was just getting ready to say that. <laughs> man, I see some some way or somehow that I talk or don't talk or do something, and after man. the fact, I'm like, damn, shit. And man. and man, I watch this shit like three times before people actually see it. And I'm like, why did I? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, this, man. That, so, that, that. But, nah, it, it, to the point, bro. I yeah. mean, we are on worst critic. And, man, I appreciate that, though, man, because to me, you you have that continuous improvement attitude, bro. Oh, yeah. Man. I feel like we're students until the day we die. Mm. And then maybe yeah. then maybe you're a master. Then I feel like a lot of people are celebrated, you know, after they die. And I think there's a reason for that in the art industry because that's when you stop growing, right? Yeah. Okay, I mean, as an artist, you're always trying to improve or learn something new or so, right, right, so, right. so you grew up right there on the bluff. So the one thing I remember, because I spent, I spent a lot of time on the opposite side of 23rd Fairmount, uh, walking on 23rd, and they had those murals. For sure. Remember those? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're still there. And I, yeah. and I was teasing Joe about them, too, whenever we had his episode. Yeah. I was like, man, them murals have aged horribly. Like, what is going on, man? Like, man, that I remember seeing those Moya at a young age yeah. and being like, man, these well, they are have so that whole, dope. They had that whole block party. Oh, yeah, and, and the, yeah, the oldest thing. ones were faded bad, faded yeah. real yeah. bad, man. Do you, I mean, do you remember that stuff, man? Oh, yeah, then? for sure. I remember being a kid watching, um, you know, I think Jenny Mendez was a part of, you know, one of the first ones down there. And, you know, I think I mentioned earlier, um, Jose Porras, mm-hmm. they were yeah. down there painting them. Um, they looked good back then, but you got to remember that the – Hill above them is dirt and mud. Right. So every time you get storms and all that, it's just right. Well, overflow. you know, you, you know why, right? Because back in the day when you used to drive through there, they threw rocks at you. I remember those days, man. I remember those days, man. The bluff yeah, yeah, kids, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you, <laughs> I'm not pointing. I'm not. I'm not saying it was you, Juan. I'm just saying. <laughs> I might have heard something about that, but <laughs> yeah, 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 you wasn't there then, man. No, 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 no. No, but um, so. You're moving, you're, you're continuing your art, man. You're still, you know, tattooing, you know, you got your shop here. Um, how many customers do you say you're doing a week? You know, is it, does it average or is it? There... It varies, but honestly, um, you know, I, I just turned 50 
last year. Mm-hmm. I don't like trying to grind so hard anymore. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I appreciate. Plus, you working. don't have to, right? I mean, you, you, I probably could work a little more, you know. <laughs> but you know, I have kids at home, and I right. enjoy spending time with them. I feel like yeah. that is probably a little more important than anything, Absolutely. you know. Um, sure. I think a lot of times we get carried away with just trying to earn as much money as we can before mm-hmm. we die, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I just feel like spending time with our family is should be the first priority on us. Of course, supporting them. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, I, I feel you on that, man. For sure, man. For sure, man. Um, you get hand cramps anymore, man? You still got them hand cramps going on? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> hand cramps, no. <laughs> we doing some hand exercises. The, the hands yeah. are the hand is stuck like this now. <laughs> yeah. No, I never had hand cramps. Uh, no, never back problems. Yeah. Any of that. Been lucky. Yeah. That's what's up, cool. man. I want to talk about something too. You you brought up fifty, man. You're fifty years old, man. Mm. Uh, one thing that I've seen that you do, man. That again, I want to applaud you on, and uh, is that you uh, ride bike, man. You ride a bike, man. I I, I cycle a little bit. Yeah. I'm not like professionally or like a right. Not like a road bike, you know. I, I mean, I exercise a little bit. Try yeah. to. I love that, man. But JL, have you have you seen? The route that Moya be doing, man. Like I haven't, oh. but I actually have seen you on a bike. <laughs> yeah, man. I just didn't stop. Man, again, I mean, the route you take, bro. When you ride, when you cycle, and you go around the city, man, it's. I'm like, man. It's a hilly ass city. <laughs> <laughs> What's it the is. longest, man? What's the longest distance that you you've rode, man? And how often do you do that, bro? Um, how often do I do like a long, long ride? Well, I don't know. Right, I, all of it, man. Let's talk. I mean, I would do anywhere from on a good ride, twenty-five to fifty miles. Mm. Uh, um, once a year, I try to treat myself to a. I'm trying to get to that hundred mark, yeah. the hundred mile. On. JL, he said, treat yourself to a hundred mile ride, man. Treat yourself, man. Re- reward myself. Well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you feel like if you're able to do it, it's a reward, right? It hey, is. Man. That is. Bro. It is, man. Um, I just try to stay active. That's all. And that's and, and we about, we live in a beautiful city. Um, yeah. We do. It's it's such a. Every time I ride, man, I feel like I get home and I feel um, like a reset. Been, yeah. Have well, you ever rode like and it started dumping rain on you, bro? <laughs> No, I I try to be pretty pretty All cautious, right? I don't like I, a couple of times, and you know I I didn't think I'd enjoy it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. But it's nothing that I would want to do often. Right, it's too dangerous. What kind of it bike is. you got, man? I got a simple Trek sport bike. Yeah. Nothing, nothing fancy, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a track bike is a nice bike, though, man. I mean, it's mid grade. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you talk about a nice bike. You're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're talking about financing and nice everything. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah. <laughs> man, well, it's staying active. I mean, you know, again, I've known you since we were kids, bro. And I remember even working out with you before. You know, yeah. me, you, Juan C. You know, shout out Juan, man. Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. Uh, shout was out Juan. Up in uh, in a uh, Gold's Gym in Westport, man. Mm. And uh, we met up, and me and Juan, and, and even at his house, I think we for worked sure. out at his house too. The before, pit, man. the pit, bro. Look, Moya and Juan C. Man, they they get it, man. They get it. <laughs> nah. They be stacking their plates, man. Of course, not maybe not so much now. I know I don't. I know I don't be stacking shit like I used to, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, just staying active, like you said, man. At our age, right? We have to. You know, we, we got we to gotta do that, man. We yeah, got to keep it going, care. man. Got to take care of yourself, man. Got to take care of yourself. Yeah, man, for sure, man. Have you ever been on a podcast one? No, this is the first time. First I time? Never, I never thought I would either, you know. But, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I, I had I had to represent for you guys, you know. No, nah, man. You we, guys are doing a good, cool thing cool awesome thing here man and that's the whole thing man like that's you know our whole thing is getting out into the city yeah thank you thank you thank you absolutely but you know getting out to the city man meeting with people like yourself people who've been in kansas city man i mean and and people who haven't you know to be fair but i always say this you know when d rod and i we go out and we talk to people we're born and raised in kansas city just like yourself right right and for us it's like man we know some outstanding people oh my God. just like Juan Moya yeah. doing great things yeah. in the city you know you you are blessing people with sentimental value every day you put that tattoo needle on them you know what I'm saying yeah. so I really appreciate the work you're doing man for the city and, and just keeping your leg because you're creating a legacy bro you're creating a legacy for the city I mean man. particularly for, for people from the west side man well, because People grew up on the bluffs, man. They ain't got a lot of stories like you're the one that like you. You know what I'm saying? That's a success yeah, so, story, brother. Yeah, yeah. You I mean, you got, you got John Fierro. Yeah. 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 Shout yeah. out to John West Fierro. Bluff back in the day. 
Yeah, yeah. man. Um, is there a tattoo that you won't put on somebody? There's quite a few, you yeah. know. Um, I think I've gotten um, far enough in my career where I'm able to turn things down, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't like doing certain things. Certain things, you know, yeah. that are, that I find are going to be offensive to a lot of people, you know. Right, right, right. And and I don't feel bad anymore because you they can go they can go right down the street and get it done, you know. Right. Go somewhere else. Sure. And I, and I I don't judge nobody, you know. I just kind of tell them, I'm sorry, I'm not the guy for you, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I can maybe point you in the right direction. And I, and I, you know, I stopped in here earlier because I was trying to catch you doing something. Right. But one of the things I noticed, and I'm sure this has changed with time, man. So when you when you was uh, early on, when you was tattooing friends and family, and you're your first spot up in Truce, how did you prepare for a tattoo then? And how has it changed to? Because today I saw you on a pad, and you had a little digital pen in your hand, oh, yeah. and you were drawing. So, man, talk about that a little bit. What, is that, what does that look like now? I mean, it's changed quite a bit. And for a lot of people, a lot of people haven't switched over quite yet, you know? Yeah. You got a lot of old schoolers that won't do it. Right. I was a little bit of that way at first, but you got to keep up with the time, right? Yeah. So, so like, how did you prepare, like, back at Truce? And then, like, did you do it on how'd you... paper? A lot of paper. paper. How's that carbon paper, right? With that. And, um, well, really for the drawings, you know, you had light tables. And a lot of tracing paper, a lot of paper. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you wasted a lot of paper back in the day. Yeah. So that's one good way to look at it. Much you're not little. you're not wasting a lot of paper anymore, you know, right. with the iPad. Yeah, one thing I, that they changed also, too, and I, I don't know, I haven't got any work done in years, but when I did, um, they changed the gun. Machines are definitely the different. Machines are different, bro. Like, For sure. How know, are they different? Well, okay, so all everything I got, right, it was all and the pedal. Right, it was a pedal, and it, it would just you know that I, I would always say, man, I, I need to feel that, I need to hear it, and I need to feel that pain, I need to hear that buzz. I want right? to be in pain, yeah, when I want to feel this that, to you know, and uh, and that that sound that you know, real loud, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the shit they got now, man, it's silent, it's it's man, it, the, the, I, it's quiet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. What they do different? Do you know what they did different? How was that? Of course, of course. I mean, back in the day, everybody used coil machines. Okay. And yeah. coils are um, a little more um, industrial, maybe. Yeah. Um, the noise comes from your armature bar, from your front spring hitting the coil, okay. which makes that, like, B sound. B, yeah. B's working. Oh, yeah. Um, now you got pins, and they're yeah. cartridges that pop in there, and it's just a, like a rotary, and they're really quiet. You walk in tattoo shops now, and it's... Can't you don't hear the machines, you yeah. know. But you'll go in some that, where people are still using the coil machines, and you got the beehive sound going on. How, yeah. many, how many different guns will there be? I mean, or, you know, the, with the coils and all that that you use, and I'm sure you still got but those. The thing so. with the coils is you have to set up every machine for everything, you know, separately. You know, a liner, yeah. right. a liner, a shader. You know, you got different types of liners, different yeah. thicknesses. Same with your shaders and... With the cartridge, it's pretty much a pin. They call them pins anymore. Okay. It's just like a long, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just like um, you hold it like a pin, but it's real thick. Yeah. Like a mi- like the base of a microphone, like kind of like, kind of like this, you know? Yeah. But you pop in the cartridges on the bottom that have different needle groupings. So you, all you need is one of those really pretty much, and your cartridges are just different. Yeah. Does, it, does it vibrate in your hand at all? No. Uh, rotaries are just up and down. Oh, okay. And the, the cool thing is, um, rotaries, that's pretty much how I got into it was with the rotary machine, right. which is the way they used to do like back in, you know, like in jail and stuff, you know, in prison, yeah, you know, they yeah, would yeah. use machines that have the the little motors that turn and they're quiet yeah. and the they, mach- use, they use the double A batteries. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. And now they're back to rotaries pretty much. I mean, the, the, the contraption inside the pins are kind of like a rotary machine now. It reminds me of uh, you seen the movie Born in East L.A. Oh yeah, yeah. How, how about whenever he's he he he's trying to do anything in prison, right, yeah. or jail, and he's like, like he sits the guy in the electric chair, right, and he sits him on the uh, the needle. Yeah, yeah. He sits on the needle and he turns on the switch. Yeah, and he's like, ah, and he thinks he's electri- electri- <laughs> electri- yeah, electrifying that. him or electrocuting him. Uh, that, that's what that reminded me of, bro. Yeah, that's back to Cheech too, right? Bro, yeah, Cheech, yeah, bro, yeah. Cheech, yeah. and he's like, what did what did, what was it? He was like. I want you to do my girlfriend or my wife. With the brains right. coming yeah. up in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I wonder, yeah, he's Shoot like, she slept with my brother or something <laughs> yeah. like that. That's that, it. That shit was funny, man. That shit is funny. Is there a piece, one that 
and I know you're getting better, like you're talking about, right? That constant improvement mindset. But is there a a, a piece or a um, a design rather that you're like that's I'm good at I'm really good at drawing this. Um, I don't think so. No, no. Come on, bro. You're too humble, man. You're no, too humble. I mean, it's that that, that it's that. And I think it goes back to that. Um, you know, self criticism or to, yeah, you know, sure. and, you know, as, and like you said, you know how how we uh, see all your art and appraise yeah. praise it. You know, and you know you're your worst critic, man. For but, sure. You know, and it's uh, you know probably a little probably that right, and and uh, also like you said, you know, trying to get better with everything you do man yeah right for sure i mean either way i was off i I guess where i was going with that is i was just trying to figure out is there a piece that you that people come in here you know like a lion or you know a casey you know or something that you're like man i've drawn this hundreds hundreds of times you could do a blindfold i could do this really well now i think it changes with the times you know Back in the early 2000s, like, Panthers were really big, you know? Oh, okay. And now you got Lions are really big, yeah. you know? Tribal was really big in the 90s. Uh-huh. You know, See, it, the, it changes. I want to get a Lion, man, because I really want to get a Lion, man. That's but then I, I started seeing them on everybody, and I'm like, but it's I don't it, But it goes more with anymore. you, man. Yeah. It goes more, <laughs> it's more personal with you. It is. It, and here's the other thing, too, and, I, and, and maybe I'm putting myself out there too much. I wanted to get something... Like a Dia, de, Dia de los Muertos. Nice. Yeah. I wanted to get something like that, right? Yeah. And I started noticing that a lot of people, sure. not just Chicano, not just Mexicanos, you know, or Latino yeah. people, are getting this anymore. Right. It's a lot of different cultures now doing this. That's big, yeah. And especially in Europe. In Europe, it's really big. Yeah, it is. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still, man, see, now you're figuring out why I ain't got a tattoo. <laughs> well, yet, you got man. you got to remember, nobody's going to wear it like you, though. Yeah. Just like, you, uh-huh. you know, I see, mean, we, facts, we're man. all our That's own, facts. you know. That's facts, man. See, we might have to put we might have to pull the table out here tonight. While yeah, yeah, get done. down, we get down. Man, I, I, I know I need to get one. I want to hear that. But, I, man, look, next time I come see you, bro. I want the old school. I want to hear that. Dude, we make it happen for sure. <laughs> he about made me spit this. <laughs> I, I saw it. it all feels the same, though. I know, man. And, and you know, it, it's funny because I think, you know, I, I ain't trying to talk on myself by no means, but I think the, the, the last couple of times, man, I, I, uh, I was kind of like falling asleep, right? Like I was, <laughs> you know, and dude was like, man, are you, I think, Honestly, I think even you said that because you you did my Jesus I got one on my leg, bro. Yeah, I remember that, right? Yeah. And uh, you were like, "Man, you, you're just like like he he, he gave me yeah, surprise, right? Yeah. He gave me surprise." I'm like, "Yeah, man, that's cool." One thing we haven't talked about yet, Juan, is this location right here. Okay, so we're right here on 39th and what is this Genesee? Genesee, yeah. 39th and Genesee, right? So if y'all want to come see Juan Moya, yeah, 39th and Genesee, come come check you out. Sure. Um, what do they got to do, man? They just got to, like, come you, in you, here? You can pop in. You can pop in. You can also get on, you know, Instagram, okay. Facebook. Hit them up. And so yeah. with that being said, what's your, what's your? I mean, you want to give out your IG uh, and sure. your phone yeah. number or something like that? If somebody wants to set an appointment, a call, you know, how you can message you, you, you can message me. Um, on, um, there's a couple ways you can do Instagram. It's Juan Moy 73 Moy 73 Yeah, same with yeah. Facebook. Or you can call the shop. Right, right, okay. right. And, okay, so even with that, I know you said you got a lot of portraits and stuff like that. Um, will you be, will people, like, if, say they want to get one done, are you open to doing some work, some artwork, like what you got behind you? I'll definitely people? do commissions. Yeah, I don't, I don't think people realize that, but I like doing commission yeah. pieces as well. Yeah, I've well, done let's several. let them know that, brother. Let's yeah. let them know that, man. If, if there's a piece or, you know, if you got a sentimental value, a sentimental portrait, and say, you know, with what we, we got here behind uh, Moya here, man, if you guys want something out there, man, give him a shout, right? For sure, for sure. Yeah, man. You, you, you clearly love drawing Chicano art, man. Um, is that, is that uh, something that you're just going to continue to? I, I like drawing Chicano art, love drawing Chicano art, and I also like pop culture. Oh, okay. I like sports. Yeah. So I, I like going with the time, you know? Yeah. What about, like, um, entertainers or i mean i know you got, sure. i know you got a uh, trejo behind you but i'm thinking like actors or um, rappers or you know things like that i like doing all of them yeah yeah the first person i ever get got signed was actually um it was snoop dogg 
Ah, uh, okay. Snoop yeah, Dogg piece. Snoop Dogg piece, yeah. yeah. Hey, that, that's the spark there for me. And I think you also, I mean, you got Ice Cube, too. Ice Cube, and he was awesome, man. He was, yeah. man, he was so cool to talk to. He was, really? um, he, to, for him to take 10 minutes of his time and actually just talk to me, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm nobody, you know what I mean? He's actually talking to me. Yeah. Cool, cool, quick story with that is um, I met him at Harrow's. He was performing there. Yeah. I had I had my piece with me. I had two pieces, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting at the lobby waiting for someone to come from his entourage, anybody. Yeah. And the guy comes out of the elevator, looks just like Ice Cube. Like, Damn, is that him? That's him. I'm like, oh, that's not him. And he walks over to me and he sees the piece I have. He's like, oh, let me check out your work. He's checking. I said, oh, man, this is really nice. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to get it signed by Ice Cube, man, but I don't think I'm going to run into him. He goes, oh, man, that's my dad. Oh, there's O'Shea. It was O'Shea. And um, he goes, I'll tell you what, man. I was, I was, I was, you meet us over here at this time, and he'll sign it for you. I was like, you really think so? He goes, it's a done deal. So I met him, and um, Ice Cube comes down with an entourage, and I show him the pieces, and he's so super cool. And he starts talking, and he says, hey, man, I got something in the works. Keep your eye out. It's something really big. Hmm. He goes, my son's traveling with me for it. He's, he's, you know, he's learning the ropes. Yeah. Come to find out. He was talking about straight out of Compton. Ah. O'Shea, and O'Shea always traveled with them, but right. he was really right. traveling with them then to learn his traits and stuff, right. so he can. In the acting. Yeah, so that was really cool that he shared that with me. Oh, that yeah, is man. dope. And that he is was, dope. He was with Dub C as well. I don't know if you yeah. know Dub C from oh, Westside Connection. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> and and, 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 and Dub C put the death grip on me, man, when Did I shook he? his hand. Hell yeah, oh, <laughs> man! And you know, <laughs> brought me to my knees, man. And that being what you do. Come on, man. He, yeah. he can't be he can't be having no He didn't he didn't do the crip walk out there? Man, I would love to them watch that. I would never try it, but I would love to see it. I, <laughs> like that to me is dub C, man. Like that you know, you see yeah. all these videos of people doing it yeah. now. Yeah. Like that's a dub C thing, man. <laughs> For sure. I mean most people that I've met through my signings have been super awesome. Yeah. Los Lobos, I got to hang out backstage with them. That's oh, dope. Man. That was really dope. What drawing you got of them? What'd you do with them? I did an airbrush, it's probably the size of that one back in, um it's like three feet by four feet um uh, bro. i got a, it was that was about 10 years ago too they were at knuckleheads as a matter of fact yeah, mm. yeah, and um, i don't know if you're familiar with louis louis lopez uh, he's in the band he yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. smoking a cigarette out and out there at knuckleheads and <laughs> yeah, yeah. i showed him my piece and he's invited me in with the, with the band and all that they're back there partying and yeah. Yeah. they all took their time to sign it i Man. thought that was awesome too oh you gotta get him exhibit <laughs> yeah yeah I, I you know i i I don't think I've ever seen that one. Yeah. But man, with as much as you have, man, I mean, you you have to bless the world with what you got, man. Man, you, you know what I mean. Show it off. Man, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm just I'm glad to see that you know you get out whatever's in your heart and mind yeah. on paper or on up somebody's body or you know whatever you got, man. You're you're putting it out there for us to see. Just like just like this room right here, man. man that Carlos like Santana stuff. one, I, I just keep on staring at it, man. I mean, because I mean, of course, we're all Santana fans, man. man. But that that's just phenomenal. It was man. very nerve wracking meeting him. Really? I've never really been like too crazy starstruck with anybody. Yeah, it's always exciting. But with him, it was um, well, a, he had he had a legend, he bro. had an aura to him. Yeah. Yeah. It was almost like I'm sure it was just me and my mentality or whatever. But it's like he was glowing, man. <laughs> Oh, really? It was yeah. really and surreal. I get that. Yeah. I get that because, and you know, and, and I think being because me myself, I'm a super fan. Like I listen to a song of his probably every day. Mm. You know, on my playlist, he's in rotation, yeah, yeah, heavy, yeah, yeah. heavy, deep, right? Yeah. And I, I can probably get that, man. How I, I would probably see that as well if and I was to see him or meet him. The cap that off that night, I actually got to see him too after that, you know, in the concert. Oh, oh, yeah. So it was a pretty epic night. Shout oh, out yeah. to my brother in law that made that happen for me and my wife. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there somebody that you weren't able to get that you were just waiting and waiting? <laughs> Vincente Fernandez. Oh, oh man. man. But, man, he. Um, I, I I I thought it'd be a little easier than what it was, but yeah. he was really discreet in how he moved. The Mexican yeah. Elvis, bro. Yeah, yeah. Then, you know that that opportunity's gone from yeah. R.I.P. But yeah, did you see him at concert? I saw him. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Did, went, did you see Carlos Santana in '19 or just this last, last year? When did you get that sign? That was that was before. It was when it was with Rod Stewart. I don't oh. remember the year, oh, okay. but I've seen Carlos. You know, a handful yeah. of times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went to go see Vicente. Um, he was at Sprint, old Sprint Center, T-Mobile Center mm-hmm. now. Uh, man, that had to be like 10 years ago maybe, 10 years right. ago. Man, that was a great concert, great yeah. concert. Yeah. Well, check it out, man. Let's talk about the city, bro, because I know born and born and raised here in the city, man. 
the west side even right where you're where you're from man it's changed quite a bit man what do you think man when you see the city now just it's evolving quite it a bit. is big time mixed feelings you know yeah i think it's good and bad yeah um i like to try to be a little more optimistic about it and think yeah. that it's for the better you know yeah yeah, yeah for sure but it's definitely not going to be the west side we know yeah. it ain't anymore ago. right it's now not, right yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's that gonna be even less man, that yeah. transition is has jumped quite a bit I mean, you know, just just uh, here. I mean, Cesar Chavez, 23rd, right? Like on one end. I mean, for some reason, you can't even go across to the Kansas side anymore. I don't know why. On that but <laughs> the bridge is shut down. It's been shut down forever. But then on the other end, uh, before you get to, you know, the highway, you know, you got a nice little restaurant in there, a little bar in there now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just it's so different. Summit up there, you know, where Maddie Rhodes is all the restaurants, mm-hmm. you know, just different people, you know what I'm saying? Right. Different different cultures. I think the cross uh, crossroads really, you know, it, it influenced a lot of that little area right there, Summit to the to the highway, you know what I mean? I think Summit might have set it off though. Oh, for sure. You know, your little Bluebird Cafe and all yeah, that up in there and then it kind of yeah. just trickled on down the crossroads yeah. there. Absolutely, man, Years absolutely. Ago. Years ago. I uh, I was I was thinking about like, you know, cuz you said, you know, man, I used to walk those streets and this and that. Sure. And, bro, I swear to God, Juan, the other day, probably like a month ago, let's say, I was uh, I was with my wife, and we were driving. It was at nighttime. And I said, this is how, I, that's how I said, this is how you know this area's changed. It was at night, bro, like 9 o'clock at night. We're coming down Summit yeah. to 23rd, so we're going south, okay, pulling up to the light. And I think, I think man, where were we going? We were going to go eat somewhere down, down there. And... I saw these three people jogging, no shirt. They were just jogging down 23rd. And I'm like, that's how you know the neighborhood's changed right there. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But to your point, to your point though, right? For the good, right? I mean, it's good to see that, right? It is. But then then there's that impact. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? The impact that a lot of the West Siders are dealing with. You're taking some losses too, you know, with that. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Is there something that you've seen change or evolve or grow that you're like, man, I'm really proud to see this? I think the people as a whole, you know, yeah, absolutely. the Latino community really absolutely, supporting bro. each other, doing things like this, mm-hmm. you know, it's grown dramatically in the last 30 years, you know? Yeah. Well, shit, bro. You're, you're part of that story, man. Yeah, you're, you're part of part that of story. Part. You're a big part of it, man. I mean, for, for those folks, uh, you know, earlier we were putting up, right. And I was talking to Juan and I was like, bro, you from the hood, just like us. He goes, bro, I'm from the projects. And I was like, <laughs> and I said, okay, dude, you're for yeah, the projects, yeah, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm from the Kansas Projects, man. South Mill, man. Shout okay. out South Mill, yeah. man. That's how I know a lot of the the West Side families. You know, some of them went to the Kansas side for a little bit, lived with us up there. So, you know, shout out, shout out to them. They know who they are. For sure. Yeah, man. I think that just you know, like you talked about on the growth on there, man. It's it's bittersweet to a lot of people, man. Um, but I think that you know, um, families, you know, they ultimately, you know, want to do something better for their kids, for their babies and grandbabies and everything else. Oh, yeah. and I think that it's kind of hard to see that transition happen with uh, the restaurants and, and all the coffee shops and everything else and, you know, people coming in. But it is, it is. I think it's great for growth, you know. Um, I, know. I, I was wondering, though, man, what is a spot that you remember as a kid? It's probably not there no more. I mean, I can think of a lot. A lot. But what was that spot that you remember on the west side growing up that you're like, man, I miss that place? Some memories or something. Yeah. Right? I mean, Sanchez Market was, you know. Yeah. You know, your chicharrones and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Your yeah. screen door when you go in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Flies all over the place and shit. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. What is, uh, talking about that, bro, is there any places that you still hang out or go grub at, man, around there? Get us, give them a shout out, man. Who, who do you go to, bro? Man, it's kind of sad to say on the boulevard, not really. Not a lot. No. Yeah. yeah. No. You know, there's a lot. Of, a lot of that. A lot of those areas, man. They've changed, man. Yeah. You know, they they they've had to evolve too with the times. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I mean, some of them places they just not what they used to be. You know what I mean? Are gone. But but I will tell you, and I know you're gonna know this spot, La Fama. La Fama missed, Bakery for I sure. I missed that place, bro. Yeah, on the boulevard. Yeah, I for sure. I missed that place, man. They were fire. I mean, they, that was fire, fire. I, yeah. I, I, I told D-Rub, man, I'm like, dude, I don't think there was any other Pondusa place in Kansas City but that one when yeah, I was growing up. Yeah. Now they're all over, man. Now there's a lot I mean, of places, shit, man. We had Carlos Gomez on here. He lived. He grew up in Topeka. 
Oh, yeah. And he said, we used Her. to go to La Fama just to go get Ponduce. I'm yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's how you know it was the people. one, man. Yeah, there, wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of those stores back then, you know? Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Um, but yeah, man, appreciate, you know, the time that you have here with us, man. I'm going to let D-Rod, man, just kind of wrap us up on some questions. Yeah, just I know, a couple, uh, man. Yeah, I know you got some. <laughs> just, some just a couple, man. Um, you know, to go back on, on, on your tattooing, man. What what do you think is the number one cover up that you do, man? It's obvious, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just know. tell it to the people who are out there who want to get it, man. What is it, man? Exes, of course. You yeah, know the names, names right? Right, right? All my exes live in yeah, Texas, yeah. man. Look, I I I tell people this all the time, man. Do not get nobody's name tattooed on you, man. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm married 25 years this year. Am I safe? I think you've earned it, right? I mean, <laughs> wait, no, has she earned it or no? <laughs> Both you. Man, you got to get that that lion before you get. Man, that, right? I'm going to get several things before <laughs> that. Problem. Hey, congratulations! Twenty five years is on. Appreciate you, brother. That's something. Appreciate that's you. something, man. All right, and then all right. So yeah, we we know that it's names, right? That's a, probably the number one cover. Yeah, you know, sure. That you always get. Um, do you ever try to tell them not to get that when they ask it? Anymore, I mean, I, I just don't do it. Oh, okay. That's one of them. Right. I don't tell them not to because who yeah, am I to say don't do it? Yeah, right. yeah. It may work out, you know? Yeah, it may. Okay. Chances are, I mean, it might not, but. <laughs> right. So, so I got to tell this story because you actually did this piece when you was up at Freaks on Broadway. So, <clears throat> My sister, well, I sh- never mind. I ain't gonna. I ain't yeah, even gonna mention. It. I ain't gonna mention no names. I ain't gonna throw them on there. But somebody I'm related to, uh, they had a boyfriend, oh. and they were like, "Man, I'm gonna go get this tattoo. Man, I want to get her name on me. You know." Yeah, and it was. A, it was. A, yeah, Juan did it, and uh, he was like, "It was a Chicana, like a like. Uh, she's wearing like a sombrero, man. The yeah, 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 and." Um, it had like a ribbon to where you could put uh, the name of somebody on it. And he's like, I want this piece. I want this piece. He's like, who should I go to? And I was like, bro, you need to go see Juan Moya, you know, this and that. And I ain't even got a tattoo by you. And I was like, go see Appreciate Juan Moya. It. Thank you. And he's like, all right. So this is probably 2000, man, I'm going to say like four, five, six, somewhere in there. We go up to see you. He sits down in the chair. And uh, you did the piece. And he turns in the chair. He's like, what do you think, bro? And I'm like, that's cool, man. You know, it was a pretty piece. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't anything about you. It was just like, bro, this chick does not like you like that, you know. And and he, But he did it. Yeah. Man, they was they was done. Like six months later, they was done. And she was pissed that he even got it. Like, when I, when I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, shit. That's not going to work out. You know, because most chicks, you would think, like, they're going to be happy, right? Not this one. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think a lot of chicks are not happy. I think a lot of girls feel like you're defeated and mm. they probably feel like they're trying to like demand some type of commitment with that or something, right? Maybe that got to play with probably, it. Probably, yeah. Or yeah. it's a it's the whole uh what do they call it? Like, like the like the the curse is on me now, you know, on us, you know, because that's that's kind of the the reputation of it. It is kind know? of taboo. For yeah, sure. taboo. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. All right, man. So, <laughs> a person that wants a first tattoo, right? What kind of advice would you give that man or woman? What what, what should they do first, man? Just do a little research. Um, yeah. Maybe forgot what kind of style you're looking for. Yeah. Find the right artist for that. And Location. Of course, um, on your body, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, make sure you know you're gonna get it where you're gonna die with it. You know. Right. Yeah. Make sure you know you're gonna ride out with it where you, where yeah. you get it. You know, like, want to ride out with it. Like right. Don't do nothing crazy, drastic or something. Yeah, right? you know, any more people are getting you know a couple of years they call them warp tour tattoos where it's your hands or your neck first. Oh, don't have anything else done but your hands and neck, you know? Yeah. yeah. But you definitely don't want to do nothing like that. But, yeah, just as long as you want it, I, that's I, all that matters. I thought you was going to say, take a needle, heat it up, and start poking yourself and see what you think. Yeah. If, if that, you, get a little bit of a feel, you get a little bit of a feel that way, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe start off small or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I maybe. think ultimately get what you really want, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, people always say, you know, you hear people all the time, man, throughout the years, right? Like, 
you got to get something that means something to you. Well, that could be anything. Because mm. every single one that I got has a certain meaning to For me. For sure. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's the uh, misconception that a lot of people get. You know, they like, even if it's something that's like a star or a little fish or, you know, like, uh, you know, it has some type of meaning to them for that reason and right. that part of their life, you know. So the, the it chapter, yeah. So it shouldn't be any type of look down on anything that people get. No, right? yeah, man. I'm just saying, like, that's. I mean, back to why I don't have a tattoo on. It's because I would have had so many damn things on me that I would be like, "Why did I put this on me?" You know. Now I would have been proud at the time. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I would have been very proud and probably would have for most of it, you know, mm-hmm. but there definitely would have been things like I would have been like, why did I do this? You know, yeah. looking at myself. That's yeah. well, that's one way to look at it, but you can also be like, why didn't I do it? Ah. But ah. But ah. So you can look at it man, two ways. you are a man of wisdom, Juan. <laughs> you're, you're making me it's feel just two like, ways to look at now it, I'm living right? in regret, yeah, see? Yeah. Now I'm living in regret <laughs> now, see? Yeah. Damn it. You got to be open-minded with it, man, right? <laughs> you do. Yeah, man. Okay, well, here we go, man. So you, you know already, man, our, our logo, right? Interrupt KC. You're you're an avid uh, listener, man, in our audience, and thank you for that. Yes, sir. Um, people, places, and things, man, is what we like talking about. Great people like yourself. Juan, give us one person that you believe represents Kansas City, bro. As a whole? Yeah, yeah just man. one person. That's, that's man, that's so hard. I mean, it, it's fine. probably you. You know people, yeah. man. You know people who probably don't get that recognition, but they they in the city. I mean, you know, you mean like abroad and everywhere, like yeah, some yeah, wherever, man. anybody. I mean, this might be kind of. I'll say George Brett. Yeah, George Brett. Okay. George Brett. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. When you think of George Brett, what else you think of? But Kansas yeah, City Royals. You you, you, grew, you grew up with the Brett man, the yeah, great. You yeah, know. Yeah, I did too, man. I was yeah. at the tail end, man. I was at the tail end. So yeah. I mean, like. Don't get me wrong. I play a lot of baseball, and I, I love George Brett, man. He's he's a he's a Hall of Famer, man. Like, salute, man. Yeah, Come on, interrupt KC. Join us, George. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> we'll but, get him, man. But, and we'll but, drink with him, too, yeah, man. Yeah, but, but the <laughs> thing is, man, drink, is man. I was at the tail end, you know, when yeah. he was just like, he had done all his great stuff already, yeah. and he was just kind of biding his time to retirement. So I remember seeing him down the street here, man, where we're at, at uh, Jazz, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, yeah. Seeing, I think he might have been with me, man. I don't know. No, nah, it's a good one, though. We ain't, we ain't had some whiskey, George. I, I heard he's not the nicest of people, but yeah. but you're saying people that remind you. Yeah. I'm I might have seen him stumble out of a place once or twice. Oh, he stumbled. Right. When I seen him, he was, man, that dude was so fucked up, man. He was drunk. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I don't know. All right, man, well, you know, again, I want to I want to thank you tremendously, man. It's an honor, man. Absolute um, honor. Is there is there anything, Juan, that you'd like to share with people, man, or audience, man, that um, maybe something we didn't ask you, something you want to share, bro? Off the top, I can't. Think of nothing. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I might go back on the George Brett and say Buck O'Neill. Ah, Buck, Buck O'Neill. O'Neill. Right. Okay. Man. Right. It's O'Neill, still baseball, man. but yeah. Buck, hey. it's Buck O'Neill, man. I got a, I got a baseball City. signed by Buck O'Neill, man. Really? It's a memory. Oh, yeah, man. So, you know, I was sharing, you know, one of our last episodes, I was sharing how I used to play baseball in RBI, uh, RBI League. I played for the West Side team, actually, yeah. uh, a year or two. And we used to play at Satchel Page Stadium. Well, that's where Buck O'Neill watched the games and played you know he used to play right. the games there yeah. so he used to go there and watch us play wow. like just for fun man and he'd just be like a fan That's sitting awesome. back cheering, there man cheering, oh man awesome. cheering clapping hey you know good game guys you know blah 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 and uh you know we always had picture opportunities and stuff but to me because i love baseball yeah. i never really cared about the picture I was more of like, man, sign this baseball. Because that meant, like, awesome. like your art. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. sign this. Yeah. You know, this means more to me than a photo with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was that was always dope. And I'm I'm glad, speaking of the city, man, they're naming that bridge, that new bridge, Buck O'Neill yeah, Bridge. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Salute, man. man. Salute great. to that guy. One thing we ask our people, Juan, tell us you're from KC without telling us you're from KC. That's another thing, like now or just in general? I mean, bro, Either you're born like, you're born and raised, bro. So what's up, man? some only Kansas City people will know and relate to you. I mean, if I had to say now, it's obvious that people all say it already, right? Patrick Mahomes, right? Patrick Mahomes, yeah. man. I mean, he put Kansas City on, on the Number map. 15 MVP, man. Man, that dude, he, yeah. is, he is the man. He yeah. is the man. There he is right there. I'm, hey, I'm glad to see. 
I'm glad to see that dude carrying the torch of Kansas City everywhere. You know what? We real. just I was just watching again for probably the fiftieth time, <laughs> right? <laughs> when uh, when they picked him for the draft. Oh yeah. You know, man, I, I watched it again just today, man. But bro, I mean, we grew up right. We there was decades, Juan. You know, oh, decades. Yeah, we thought, sure. man, the Chiefs ain't never gonna win shit. Next never year, gonna win. Year. Still watch it though, you know, oh, bro. Yeah, yeah. It still, still made memories. There, bro. Still, still and, and the Royals especially. And I'm yeah. still, I'm kind of wondering when the Royals are gonna start winning again. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. You know, hopefully soon. But yeah, man. Hey, listen, Juan. Yeah. Salute to you, man. Thank you for joining us on. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for this being your first podcast sure. man we really appreciate it it's an honor brother man by all means man as I, I, let me just add to that man as long as i've known you bro and again i can't thank yes. you enough man and i can't applaud you enough brother for everything that you have done everything that you have drawn here your accompli- accomplishments with your artwork yes, with sir. your tattooing man um as much as you don't believe it or like to see it or or think about it the impact that you have on people like myself in mm. our in our community in mm-hmm. our city, bro, man, I, I I could got nothing but love and respect for you, bro. I appreciate that so much more than you'll know. Yeah, yeah man. man. Yeah, Keep sure. up the good work, man. Keep up Thank representing you. us. You know, out here doing doing the work you do. You guys, you guys do the same, man. You're on. You guys are doing great. I love appreciate it. You. Thank appreciate you man. you, man. Thank you. Interrupt, KC. People, places, and things, Kansas City. Yes, sir. Like, subscribe, follow, share, man. Give Juan Moya some love for us. Get some of that artwork from him, man. Peace, peace, peace. Thank you, everybody.